down the stretch they come. Three weeks to go in the Sun Belt Conference, and today in Statesboro, a pair of teams battling for bowl eligibility. Georgia Southern laid an egg last week at Troy, and they're trying to get back on track against one of the best passing attacks in the league in ULM. You're watching Sun Belt Football on ESPN+. Plus. Great to have you with us again today with Danny Waugh. I'm Greg Talbot, and Amy Zimmer joins us on the sidelines in just a moment. Well, there are a couple different ways to look at the matchup today, but Danny, the big one is that it's one of the best rushing offenses in the Sun Belt against the worst rushing defense. That's right, Greg, and it was kind of the opposite last week. Georgia Southern having a tough outing against Troy last Saturday, but Louisiana Monroe, a big win at home over Georgia State, 45-31. to Now, the Warhawks can definitely win today, and if they do, it's probably going to be because of their quarterback, Caleb Evans. He threw for 300 yards last time he played Southern. And he was recently named Sun Belt Conference Offensive Player of the Week, had almost 400 total yards of offense against Georgia State. Looking for a repeat performance here today. It's up to the Georgia Southern secondary to stop him, but they're coming off a really tough game. Like you said, they gave up 300 last week against Troy. And Kendall Vildor, the preseason defensive player of the year, did not play for the Eagles in that matchup. He is back in today, so Vildor and Monclavy and Brenton have a tough outing here against the Louisiana Monroe passing game. All right, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty in the Sun Belt season. It's the Eagles and Warhawks. Both teams could use a statement win, and it's coming up next on ESPN+. All right, Danny, big standings implications today, especially for Georgia Southern when you look at that Eastern Division. Uh, same with Louisiana Monroe. Both teams 3-2 and two with the, the top team 4-1, and one, so a win here for either team could put them in the direction for a potential conference championship. Yeah, big win today for Georgia Southern would put them in bowl eligibility territory, and for more on that, let's go down to Amy Zimmer. Amy. Greg, both Louisiana Monroe and Georgia Southern are looking to become bowl el eligible for the second consecutive season. ULM two wins away, Georgia Southern just one win away. However, Louisiana Monroe knows from previous experience just because you're bowl eligible doesn't guarantee a spot as the team was not invited last season. ULM head coach Matt Viator calling this matchup one of the biggest games of the year, but keeping the one game at a time mentality. Georgia Southern head coach Chad Lund Towards saying that they're also keeping that mentality. The team is not allowing bowl eligibility pressure get to them. And he also added there's pressure every week, and the team embraces expectations. Greg, back to you. All right, thank you so much. Amy Zimmer on the sidelines, and Danny, no kidding, especially when you look at Chad Lunsford on the right side of your screen. This win means um, win today would mean even more considering what happened last week at Troy. Yeah, both Chad Lunsford and offensive coordinator Bob the best said that they really got their butts whooped against Troy. Troy came out attacking early, so that could be the reason why Georgia Southern elected to receive here to start this game. Well, it was raining for the last 48 hours or so here in Statesboro as the opening kick is away. Wes Kennedy in the end zone. And he'll take it to the 25-yard line. So even if it does start raining a little bit later as this game goes on, any Georgia Southern fans in the audience know that rain and cold has not been bad for this team. Actually, it's been a pretty good omen in 2019. Yeah, they won against Coastal Carolina and New Mexico State at home in the rain. Got the win at Appalachian State with a mix of rain and snow. And we'll see what Shy Words can do for the Eagles here to start this drive. Even though the team had a bad day at Troy last week, Shy did all he could, went for 200 all-purpose yards and a, a pair of touchdowns against the Trojans. Three touchdowns, Three touchdowns to be exact. Right. And, yeah. and Bob the Best said they had to play keep up. Is the reason why Schwartz was passing, passing so much in that game. First offensive play of the game is a handoff to J.D. King. He gets back to around the line of scrimmage. And as of this last game at Troy, he is now officially their leading rusher on the year. 570 yards and four touchdowns, although kind of a slow game at Troy last week. Only 40 yards. Yeah, it really got stopped by the Troy defense there. J.D. King being the power back in this Georgia Southern offense, averaging about four yards a carry, 567 yards and four touchdowns on the year. Diamond backfield, there's King, Matt LaRoche, and Wes Kennedy in the backfield. And on second down, they'll feed Wes Kennedy. He dives forward for a gain of about four yards. And the big question here for this Georgia Southern offense is how they're going to move the ball with the amount of injuries that they've had on the offensive line. A couple of more, more injuries happened over the last couple of weeks. 
as Caleb Kelly getting the start at left tackle here today for the Eagles. Yeah, so a banged up in mobile offensive line arrangement is the way the coaches are describing it. Here's third down and seven for Southern. Opening drive of the game. Wirtz drops back. Pressure from his blind side. Hits Kennedy, but a bad throw. A little bit low. He goes down, and that'll bring up fourth. Yeah, Wirtz was able to get it out just in time, but Kennedy falling on the catch. Not the best start for Georgia Southern on a three and out on the first drive. No, certainly not, and unfortunately for Eagle fans, that's something they're used to seeing. Southern, the second worst third down clip in the Sun Belt. 31% on the year. Interesting formation here for Anthony Beck, and now he'll move back to actually kick this one away. And Perry Carter back to receive at the ULM 25. Really great spiraling kick from Beck there to the 26-yard line, and here he goes. Turns the corner, picks up a couple yards to around the 36-yard line, and now let's take a look at this ULM offense for the first time, Danny. Like we said at the top of the broadcast, their defense has struggled this year, but their offense has been red hot. Yeah, Caleb Kelly, as we saw in the open, was named Sunbelt Conference Offensive Player of the Week, and Evans... Close to 400 yards in that game. Looking for a repeat performance. It'll be interesting how he does in this element, considering that there is some wind in the forecast. Was raining a bit earlier. Might make it tough for him to throw downfield. He's a great quarterback, but I'll tell you what, they have a fantastic running back, too. We'll talk about him in a second. On first down, play action pass. They've got Jackson, one of their leading receivers on the year. A short gain, and it looks like they'll go pretty fast here on the field. Anyway, talking about Caleb Evans, Danny, he's one of the hot quarterbacks in the Sun Belt this year, statistically the second best in the conference. And Phil Steele actually has him ranked as one of the top 30 in the country this year. I mean, you look at his stats, close to 2,000 yards passing, 15 touchdowns, only six picks, 62% passing completion. Good pocket for him, and that one's intercepted. Down the sideline, it's Rashad Bird, the linebacker and the defensive captain down inside the 25. How about that? That's interception number six on the season for the Southern defense. And the second interception for Rashad Bird. And we we're just talking about how Evans has done a great job passing the ball downfield, but this time Bird was there, was able to read the eyes of Evans and get the interception. Well, here's the thing. He had time. That was just a misdiagnosed throw, and Bird stepped in front of the pass. Yeah, plenty of guys there in the middle of the field. Good job by the Georgia Southern defense here. And Bird showing off the turnover chain. That's a good look for Rashad. Okay, so Southern pretty deep into ULM territory here. Wurzler on the option. He's got Kennedy. Comes up just shy of the 20 to bring up second down. Okay, so here's the thing about Wes Kennedy. Number 12 there, if you are a ULM fan or haven't watched Southern this year. Really, because Logan Wright has been out now for a couple of weeks, that has really put Kennedy into the spot of returning to a real running back role versus some of the slot he played last year. And since he's really been a running back these last couple of weeks, he's been a star. And he has been the, the target to look out for, along with shy words for Louisiana Monroe's defense. They want to contain those two guys, and if they can do that, they can make some good stops, similar to what they did in the first drive. And they'll feed him again. Goes into the teeth of the defense, down to around the 12-yard line, comes close to the sticks. All right, so cold down there on the field. The rain has stopped, and actually a pretty decent student section is crowded in. But obviously, as you might expect, considering it is cold and rainy for the third game in a row here in Statesboro, uh, not the biggest crowd as we get going here in the first quarter. That just shows you who the faithful fans are because they're embracing this team throughout all the elements throughout the season. All right, new first down. He got it by a couple of inches in the red zone down to the 11-yard line. They have to get down to the 1. Shile run the option. He's got space. Schwartz inside the five, and he's got it. Eagles strike on their second drive. That's a second rushing touchdown of the year for Shy Wirtz. And Shy had plenty of space on the outside on that option run. Decided to keep and broke a couple of tackles to get to the end zone. Another interesting formation, and Tyler Bass will bring him in, obviously. All right, well, considering how slow that, in kind of anemic, that first series was on offense, that was a really nice turnaround for Southern there, huh? Yeah, Rashad Byrne just being able to step up, picking up his second pick. 
And Bass puts it through. Yeah, that really was a fast turnaround. And that'll take us to a break here on ESPN+. Plus. Georgia Southern, an interception, and turns that into a touchdown. ULM tries to tie it up after this. All right, Danny, well, Chad Lunsford told us this week he thought it was really important for the Eagles to score first and get out ahead. And after a slow first series, they certainly did that in the course of about three minutes. And capped off by an 11-yard touchdown run by Shy Words. Only a second rushing touchdown on the season. His first was against Appalachian State a few weeks ago. He said All right, last so week he threw for three touchdowns. Yeah, he certainly did. All right, so ULM's going to get the ball back here after throwing an interception on their first drive of the game. And... See if they can finally get a little momentum going. Not used to seeing Caleb Evans throw interceptions. We'll talk about why in a second. Here's the kick from Bass. Really good leg into that one. That one flies out of the back of the end zone. And ULM takes it to the 25. All right, so we said right before he threw an interception that Caleb Evans is one of the best quarterbacks in the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, that does not mean he doesn't occasionally throw picks. That's number seven on the year. Yeah, just... With Jordan Southern's 3-4 defense, you're able to have two linebackers in the middle of the field, and Rashad Byrne took advantage of that getting the interception. So we'll see if Evans decides to go back through the middle or try to work on the outside. All right, here come the Warhawks to start their second drive of the game. They'll feed their running back, Josh Johnson, to the outside, picks up about four yards. He's second in the Sun Belt this year in rushing, over 1,000 yards already, nine touchdowns too. Yeah, he's definitely a threat on the running game, and also so is Caleb Evans. Evans can run the ball too. The goal for the Eagle defense is to try to contain him in the pocket and not let him get outside. That's what beat the Eagles last season when these two teams faced. And he will run it here up the teeth of the defense, spins forward to the 35-yard line, got pretty close to the first down. I think it's going to be third down and awfully short. And when you compare it to Georgia Southern's anemic third down rate, ULM's a little bit better. They're about 40% this year. That's the middle of the road in the Sun Belt. And he also can beat you either in the air or on the ground. 216 yards rushing per game, 231 yards passing. And it looks like Southern might have jumped there, although they're blaming that one on the Warhawks. Let's see. Offside, defense number 96. Defense entered the neutral zone and had made contact with the offense. Five yard penalty, results in a first down. And ULM gets one for free. That was pretty obvious. So you see there right there, Trevor Green leaning in for the staff. All right, they send McCray in motion, one of their leading receivers on the year. They feed a Johnson in a not a whole lot doing that time. And Johnson's got a really interesting story. He was committed to Ole Miss coming out of high school, ended up at a JUCO instead. He was terrific there. Got offers to a ton of the Sunbelt teams when he came out of that JUCO, ended up at ULM. And all of a sudden now, Danny, as of this year, he's become one of the best backs in the group of five. Yeah, and we'll definitely see how he plays out here throughout the afternoon. No gain on the play, though. Second down and ten. I'll go back to him. He cuts to the outside and got some space. Dives forward toward midfield, didn't get the first down. It'll be about three or four yards to go here. And I believe after that interception by Evans, they want to keep the save going on the ground a couple of plays before they go back in the air. Yeah, you can't blame them. These are two really good defenses. Although Georgia Southern only has their sixth pick of the year. If you're a Sun Belt fan, you know about that vaunted secondary with Kendall Vildor and Monquavian Brinson. Back to the ground on third down. Fighting for it is Vaughn. And it looks like he got stopped. Yes, he did. Fourth down coming up. Reynard Ellis running in on that play to make the stop. But here's the thing. It's going to be fourth and short, and ULM goes for it a lot on fourth down. The Warhawks are 11 for 21 this year on fourth down, 52%. They go for it more than anyone in the Sun Belt Conference, and they'll do it again here. Fourth and one. Peterson the motion man. Evans heads under center, looks to the sideline. Here they come on fourth. Behind his blockers, falls forward. And it looks like he got that one by a couple of inches, and they convert. That's the 12th time they've converted this season. 
And you saw at first, he tried to go for the hard count to get the defensive line jumping like they did before. Lean, this time to look to the coach, go for the quarterback sneak, able to get the first down. All right, so now a nice little drive going here for ULM. Southern brings pressure off the edge. Another play action. Evans steps up and it looks like he'll run. He does, past the line of scrimmage. Taken down for a gain of six or seven yards that time. In on the tackle first, Dylan Springer. Yeah, Springer got him first, and then Jay Bowdry finished a job for the Eagle defense. Evans was able to hold out until he found the opening, bouncing outside and got a couple of yards. And if it looks like Caleb is starting to take control of this offense, well, that's what he does. Coming up a great week last week at Georgia State, 24 for 32, and huge game that time as he connects. That one hauled in by Jonathan Hodo, his 24th catch of the year, and that's going to make it third and short. And that time, a quick pass on the outside. It will be a first down. There was a little bit of disagreement there among the referees. I see why that was. They worried about his foot placement. So they will give him a first down to the 39-yard line. Three down for Southern. Once again, Peterson in motion. He's their leading target this year, and that's a pass to Hodo again. Second straight play in the defense there to meet him as he tried to cut around the inside. And that's the great part about the 3-4 defense and Scott Sloan for Georgia Southern because you don't have to stand forward if you don't want to. You can have all four of those linebackers kind of drop back and play coverage on the wide receivers. And really that's what led their defense to so much success last year. They were able to get pressure with the three up front. Second down and seven. 6.30 to go here in the quarter. Back to the ground they go. It's Johnson. Got a good block. Turns up field toward the 20 for a first down. There's a man back there almost willing to play for Georgia Southern, but Johnson able to maneuver his way through and get another first down for the Warhawks. He had a great game last week as well, 170 yards on the ground and a pair of touchdowns. Man, what a win that was for them last weekend, huh? Considering how well Georgia State's been playing this season, it was good for the Warhawks to kind of halt their momentum and pick some momentum up on their own. Yeah, by the way, six win Georgia State already. They've had a heck of a turnaround in 2019. Back to their secondary back, it's Austin Vaughn. Pinballs around toward the 15-yard line for a gain of four or five. You don't really see many carries from Vaughn in each game. Now only his 38th rush on the season. Usually it's Josh Johnson that's getting the majority right. of the carries. He's a guy who's been well over 20 carries a game so far this year. And that, when you consider that Evans can also move out of the pocket as well, those are the primary two runners. Evans behind a couple of blockers on the designed rush. He's got a first down inside the five, pushing toward the goal line. He's not quite going to get there, but it'll be first down and goal inside the five. He could run, too. Let's not forget about that. He's over 700 yards rushing on the year and nine rushing touchdowns. Yeah, that was a good play set up by the Warhawks there. Able to get another first down now at the four. Really good drive here for ULM. First down and goal from inside the five. Vaughn takes the give around the corner, and he's in for the touchdown. ULM responds on their first drive after Southern scores. And the third touchdown on the year for Vaughn goes on the outside, leans into the defensive end. Maybe we get a touchdown. Yeah, Randy Wade with a tackle there, but couldn't keep him from outstretching those arms. Well, I guess we'll get a second chance at it, huh? Let's take a look. Because he did reach forward with his two arms as he tried to get around the corner and beat Randy Wade. The question is, was his knee down? Right. Look awfully close. Leaning in. So we're going to look at that in a second. Here it comes. So watch his knee. There's Wade on the tackle. That so angle, this is just going to be timing. Yeah, from that angle, it looks like his knee was down before he got in the end zone. This is it. But it's hard to see from that angle. He's behind Peterson. But you can tell right there, he kind of extended his hands in across the plane for a touchdown. I think it would take maybe a different camera angle. I'm not sure there's going to be enough video evidence to overturn here. It looks like this one's going to stand. 
what a way for Louisiana Monroe to answer After back. Pulling a touchdown on the field, stands. With the video evidence we have, that's the right call. Considering the bad drop, the the bad drive they had in the first drive, with that interception by Evans, it's a great way to answer back from the Georgia Southern touchdown too. Yeah, really good response there. And more importantly, Caleb Evans, he doesn't need to prove anything to anyone considering how good he's been this year, but really good to show how unafraid he was to lead the team back out on that drive after the pick. And also took a lot of time off the clock. 13 plays, 75 yards, and just over six minutes. Here's Porter. Owen sneaks to the right upright, and we got ourselves a tie game with inside five minutes to go. Really good response from the Warhawks. We're tied on the first on ESPN Plus. Back on ESPN Plus, seven to seven to five minutes to go in the first, and Danny, these are two teams that know each other well. Yes, you see here, Georgia Southern leads the series four to three. It would be five to three if it wasn't for the vacated win in 2014. But that 2014 victory for Georgia Southern was a big win for them. It was their first year in the Sun Belt Conference, and they won the Sun Belt Conference championship against Louisiana Monroe towards the end of that season. Yeah, but last year's game against the Warhawks has left a real sour taste in the mouth of Georgia Southern fans. It was actually pretty much what happened last week at Troy, except last year they beat App State, knocked him out of the top 25 and turned around and laid an egg. Yeah, same thing that happened in both years after big time victories against their their longtime rivals. All right, so as Georgia Southern takes it to the 25, let's talk about it. We talked to the Georgia Southern coaching staff this week and they were honest with us. Part of the reason they said that last week's loss to Troy was so brutal is because unlike last year, they knew this, or there was a potential for this to happen, and it happened anyway. Yeah, and that's got to hurt sometimes when you plan for something to, to not happen and that thing happens. You guys kind of have to just dust it off and, and move on to the next one, take it one game at a time. As in life, as in football. All right, first to 10 for the Eagles from the 25. Starting off a new drive, plenty of pressure here. Wirtz going downfield into coverage. What a catch by Wes Kennedy at the 45 and takes a big hit. And it might be a late hit, too. Flag is on the field. He might get some extra yardage on that. They really laid the wood on him as soon as he made that catch, and then afterward, too. Either a late hit or it could be targeting on that play. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense. Number one. The previous play is under further review. So that's Tyler Glass, the redshirt junior from Greenville, Mississippi, that made the hit on Kennedy. That was a, a tight spot that works through to Kennedy right between two defenders. Well, I'll tell you what, part of the reason Shy Wirtz didn't throw an interception last year and has not thrown an interception this year is because even when there's a tight spot, he still knows what's a dangerous throw and what's not. All right, cannot wait to see this replay because the way that Kennedy went down to me, it looked like he hit a brick wall, and usually that's got something to do with the helmet. So let's see. Shy had plenty of time. And that I looks like a shoulder to me. It looked like a shoulder indeed. I don't believe that's going to be called for target. Let's see from this angle. I understand why they felt the need to throw the flag in review, but that to me looks like more of a shoulder. Yeah. You remember, in the, with the new targeting rules, you have to have conclusive evidence that it is a targeting call, so. We'll wait another second for a call, and I'm not surprised that ULM threw so much. Are you a little surprised with how many times in these first couple of plays that Wurtz is at least dropping back? Not exactly, because they found success in it against Troy, even though That's they were true. trying to play catch up, it, it worked, so if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. It just makes the Eagles more dynamic on offense, knowing that they are a, a, a primary running team with the option. And I'll tell you what, a lot of Georgia Southern fans sometimes do get upset with how many dive plays are called. It's been nice so far today. There is no targeting by number one on the defense. Number one may remain in the game. The result of the play is a complete catch, first down. Good reviews so far today, two for two from the refs. And also a sigh of relief from Glass because that's his 60th tackle. He's one of the top tacklers on this Louisiana Monroe defense. 
Yeah, the ULM defense is fascinating. Statistically, they're the worst in the conference, but they also lead the league in interceptions. It's a really interesting group. All right, inside five minutes to go in the first quarter. Eagles from the 45. It's J.D. King. And as soon as I say not a lot of dive plays, there he goes for three yards. It's also unique how Georgia Southern is going to go about this Louisiana Monroe defense because they run a 4-2-5. I mean, it looks like it's a 4-3, right? but they have that yeah. linebacker on the outside that can play as an extra safety. You can also show potentially a five-man front as well if you want to have him blitz. Our gain of two yards that time. Second and eight for Shy Wirtz. Colby Ransom split to the bottom of your screen. Johnson, the motion tight end. And here comes Kennedy on the option. Gets to midfield, picks up three yards. That's going to bring up third down and five for Georgia Southern. So let's talk a little bit about this ULM defense. We said that they're the worst rushing defense in the league. One of the best secondaries. How does Bob DeBess and this Eagle offense plan to attack them? It's an interesting question. I think you just got to keep running it, going on the outside and giving it to Kennedy and King. Kennedy already four carries for 16 yards. I ran some split to the far side of the field now. Third down and five. They'll run the option and down goes Wirtz. What a blown up play by ULM. Ty Shelby, the junior from Houston, Texas, able to blow up that play for the Warhawks. Uh, Holy they showed cow. Five. They showed five men up front, and you had nobody covering Shelby on the outside. And there is a man down for the Warhawks currently, Lawrence Shaw. I'll tell you what, that's the kind of play that ULM could have used more of from that rushing defensive front a couple more times this year, huh? If it is, Lawrence Shaw confirmed the D-lineman out of Fort Worth. Well, he's talking to his coaches, so he's just waiting for permission to get back up now, basically. We're checking on him, making sure he's okay. It appears to be his leg, right leg. Left one's moving just fine. Might need help to get off the field. We'll see. And you can see it is his right leg. He's got a little bit of a limp there. But luckily for him, he's off pretty much on his own power. That's good news. Yeah, hopefully he's okay. Nonetheless, a, a big defensive stop, too. After scoring a touchdown, able to stop this Georgia Southern momentum. Yeah, no kidding. So now fourth down in 12 or 13, and now Southern will bring out their punt unit again. Anthony Beck from about the 35-yard line. And once again, this is Perry Carter back to receive from inside his own 15. And here comes the South Effingham Mustang graduate, Anthony Beck. By the way, their season came to an end last night in the high school football playoffs down the road. Dangerous fair catch. Pins him down inside the 10 yard line though. So another long field to go here for the Warhawks on the other side of the break. 7-7 seven to seven inside three minutes in the first. All right, 7-7 seven to seven late in the first quarter. And as you can see, yet another wet and rainy day in Statesboro. Third straight home game that has happened. Amy Zimmer has more. Greg, that's right. However, this game we are for the first time experiencing more of just a light rain, which most fans and the players are thankful for. The rain more as a mist feeling. However, the players dealing with more cooler temperatures this game. Temperatures fluctuating between the mid 40s, low 50s. Players on Georgia Southern sideline walking around with heat warmers that they're wrapping their arms and hands in. I saw Shy Words using one of those, and then also a lot of the players wearing parkas to keep warm. Greg, back to you. I'm sure you're not happy about it raining less either, Amy. 
<laughs> She's been the MVP the last couple of games. Absolutely. She's been GATA Absolutely. for sure. For sure. All right. Well, not even sure if this is technically an off-rain game for her, but it's certainly better than it was for New Mexico State and Coastal Carolina. All right, second down and nine. Back to Johnson they go, and this time the Eagle defense pushes him back. He'll get forward progress. Really good push out that time by Reynard Ellis. Man, he's come on strong the last couple of games. And throughout this season, the defense really has been controlled by the, the middle linebackers. And For Reynard sure. Reynard Ellis and Rashad Bird. Bird with the interception. Ellis getting in the backfield a couple of times. And what's interesting, interesting is because this Louisiana Monroe offensive line is very experienced. A lot of seniors and fifth-year seniors on this team. And the defense has been able to get through. All right, Evans, three for four so far through the air today. He's probably got to chuck it again here on third down and 11. He will. Plenty of time. Downfield into coverage. And he overshot Hodo. That was his third target. No flags on the play. That'll bring up fourth down. Good pressure. And a three and out will put Georgia Southern in good field position, depending on where this punt lands. We'll tell you what, we've seen a couple of targets now for Jonathan Hodo. We saw Jackson get one his way. I'm a little surprised we have not seen a, a completed pass so far to Josh Peterson. Yeah, and Peterson could be a guy they use for short passes, three or four yards. I mean, he has close to 400 yards receiving on the year. But they have not, you're right, they have not gone to him yet in this game. Yeah, technically leading receiver, they just haven't been able to scheme him open. Kennedy calls for a fair catch. Back around the 45-yard line. So really good field position here for Georgia Southern. Let's see what they can do. About 90 seconds to go until the end of the first quarter. What do we think about that last drive? I mean, just great job from the linebackers and Ellis and Bird just make great stops. I think so. That linebacker unit for Georgia Southern has been really good these last couple of games. And let's see what Georgia Southern has in store. Certainly been taking their time between plays today. Certainly no up-tempo from them yet. Cam Brown, the tight end, is part of that diamond backfield now. He'll be a lead blocker. Wurtz dumps it off to LaRoche. That play was pretty blown up. That'll just be an incomplete pass. And looking downfield, all the receiving targets for Wurtz were all covered. Nowhere to go. So trying just to dump it off to Kennedy and unable to do so. Dexter Carter Jr. downfield on that play. Haven't seen him targeted a ton this year, huh? And the Eagles do have a lot of weapons in the receiving core. I mean, Mark Rashad was the MVP in that game against Coastal Carolina. Yeah, no kidding. Darian Anderson got a, a touchdown against Troy last week, too. Second down and 10. It's King and LaRoche in the backfield. They'll feed King. Really nice cut up field. He's down inside the 35 and toward the sticks. Got right around the 33-yard line, so we'll see where they place this one. But that was a really good cut up field. It's going to be third down and short here. Third down and one. Once again, Eagles 31% this year on third down. Second worst in the conference. And it's just great to see how J.D. King has improved over the season. Cam Brown, a good block and tight end on the right side. It's King in the backfield. Third and one. They'll feed him on the delay handoff. He tries to fall forward, and it looks like he got it. But we'll hear from the refs as they pushed him back. That was close. I mean, you That's had really the, close. You had some of the linebackers for Monroe. There is a flag on the far side of the field, though. Looked like he fell around the linebacker, but might have still come up a couple inches short. Offside, defense, number 58, five-yard penalty, results in the first down. Well, I guess it doesn't matter now. And that's tough. That's from Donald Lewis, Jr. He is the vocal leader up front for Louisiana Monroe. Unfortunately, jumping offside and keeping this Eagles drive alive. All right, so Eagles break the huddle pretty fast here. Mashad split to the bottom of your screen. Dexter Carter, Jr. to the top. Mark Mashad in the slot. They'll feed J.D. King. Shakes off a couple of tacklers. He's inside the 20-yard line, down to the 15, and another first down. Big back-to-back -back plays. I'm surprised King was able to jump out of there and get a couple of extra yards. I was keeping an eye on, on Shy Words because you had three receivers on that play. 
You didn't know if Wirtz was going to try and drive back or keep it himself on the option. And it looks like that'll take us down to the end of the first quarter. Eagles have it in the red zone. On the other end of the break, 7-7. Seven to seven, Trying to take the lead into second. That's next. Well, 2018 was such a magical season for Georgia Southern football, it's hard to say that there were heartbreaking losses, but if there was one, this was it. Yeah, 44-25, the final score in that game in Monroe. Louisiana Monroe scored the first 20 points, which also consisted of two back-to-back -back deep touchdown passes from Caleb, from Caleb Evans to Marcus Green. Well, back in the present day, getting ready to start the second quarter on ESPN+. Plus. 7-7, to seven, and Georgia Southern trying to retake the lead here in the ULM red zone. Eagles 12 touchdowns on 25 red zone trips this year. Kennedy in motion. Down to about the 10-yard line, short dive play. That'll bring up second down. A good run up the middle. You had a guy on the outside that almost blew that play up from Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, Matt LaRoche on the carry about 300 yards this year and a touchdown. And LaRoche has kind of been the third option in this offense for Georgia Southern with being Kennedy, J.D. King, and even Shy Ward's getting some carries as well. Yeah, he's really been more of a try to break a big play along the outside kind of back. Second down and seven in the red zone. It's Shy on the option. Takes a big hit at the line of scrimmage. Holy cow, they brought the wood. And he was taken down by Lawrence Shaw, who made his way back in the game. We saw him go down in the first quarter. Here you see again Shaw right there. And we saw him injured a few minutes ago, but yeah. clearly looks like he's okay. Yeah, Shaw and Donald Lewis Yikes. putting a stop. That's the second big hit we've seen this ULM defense deliver. And that's the one thing that, that the Warhawks wanted to try and stop because they know that Jordan Southern loves doing second down and six, third down and two type plays. If they can stop those It'll be a good afternoon. All right, third down and five. Play action. Wirtz looking for the end zone. Instead, if he just gets rid of it, he does. And that'll bring up fourth down, and this is Tyler Bass time. That was a really good jailbreak from the ULM defense. Yeah, Sam Miller right there from the get-go on the outside. Able to get the stop. So Tyler Bass is going to come out, and it's interesting for Tyler Bass. There was a receiver in the area. The interesting thing about Tyler Bass, Greg, is that he's one of four in field goals in his last three games. Yeah, and it's been interesting considering how amazing he was last year. But part of it is also, let's not forget, the conditions that the Eagles have been forced to play in for about a month now. Yeah. This one short, call it 26. Good jump on that one from a couple ULM players, but Bass gets it through, and Georgia Southern takes a 10-7 lead. Uh, with this weather, field goals might be something that helps or hurts a team down the stretch. And we've heard Chad Lunsford talk about Tyler Bass before, and when it comes to him kicking field goals, his last kick will never define his next kick, so he's always looking forward. And we've seen a couple of Georgia Southern kickers being noticed in the NFL over the last few weeks. Yeah, no kidding. Young Wei Koo with the Falcons. How huh? what a turnaround story for him. So great. Yeah, considering that he started out with the Chargers, missed the game-winning field goal in two games, ended up getting cut, joined the, the AAF, playing for the Atlanta team there. He was going to be on the practice squad for the Patriots, and the Falcons picked him up after they released Matt Bryant. And he was the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week, knocking down four field goals for the Falcons, and a big win against the Saints. Yeah, really terrific. I think we're going to see a couple GATA signs in the... Atlanta Dome, huh? For sure. That's going to be awfully fun moving forward for the rest of the season. All right, Tyler Bass ready to put this one in the air. Hasn't given opposing returners many opportunities this year. They don't even want to try it this time. To the 25-yard line we go. All right, so Caleb Evans, after throwing an interception on his first drive, has really rebounded. He drove them down the field for that touchdown drive. This is my first time seeing him in person in the Sunbelt Conference. I am really impressed. I think you're going to start to see the Louisiana Monroe offense start to settle in. I mean, you've already saw not the best first drive throwing the pick. Jordan Southern getting a touchdown. They answered back with a touchdown of their own. 
Defense did a good job holding the Eagles to a field goal. Let's see how the offense answers back here in the second quarter. Obviously, they've been heavy on their running back, Josh Johnson, but Caleb Evans, being the second-best quarterback statistically in the Sun Belt this year, has led the way. Rolling out on play action. He's got Peterson open, but he's covered. That pass looks incomplete around the 30-yard line. It was dropped. And he hasn't gone to the outside that much because you got to worry about Monquavi and Brinson, who made the tackles there, and Kendall Vildor. It was back this week. Yeah, did not play against Troy, and you saw the stats in the open. Wasn't the best game for Georgia Southern on defense. No, no, certainly not against Troy, although... Uh, even with the great secondary, Caleb Evans has had good luck against Southern. Went for 330 yards through the air against the Eagle defense when they played last year. Takes a couple guys to bring him down, but Kendrick Duncan Jr. got to him first. He was the first one there to make the stop, and he waited for him to get through. A good patience there, huh, coming around the edge? Yeah. Don't want to jump too early. Want to wait for him to get to you, lay contact on him, and take him down. All right, third down and seven here for ULM. They are 0 for 2 on the day. Three receivers split to the far side, and actually maybe one more with the tight end and Peterson there too as well. Evans into coverage again. That one incomplete and not the best decision. That one barely even made it to Zach Jackson, who... Had it go off his hands. Yeah, bounce off his hands, almost in danger of another interception. And quick three and out from Louisiana Monroe. And Georgia Southern is going to get really good field position as they trot Kennedy back to around the 30-yard line. Who knows if he even gets that far without a bounce. And the rain's starting to pick up a little bit more. This is more than it's been drizzling since probably around 2.30. That one so nearly blocked. Great spiraling kick that now starts to tumble down to the 25-yard line. Really lucky break there for ULM, and we'll see if Southern can extend this lead up 10-7 early in the second quarter. Well, after an early injury earlier in the game, Larence Shaw is back in, and for more on that, let's go to Amy. I talked with ULM's head athletic trainer and he told me Lauren sustained a minor lower leg injury. He hopped on the bike and warmed back up and before you know it was back out there and he's good to go for the rest of the game. Guys, back to you. Not only back out there, Danny made a big tackle and took down Shy Wirtz. Absolutely. Let's see how he can continue to contribute here to the defense. All right, Shy comes out under center from the 25 to start this new drive. Here's Wes Kennedy trying to get around the corner. Goes end over end for a gain of about five yards. Big hit that time delivered by Ty Shelby, his second tackle. Another big time hit from this Monroe defense. Kennedy got turned inside out. Okay, so let me ask you this. We said at the top of the broadcast that ULM is statistically the worst rushing defense in the Sun Belt. I would not have guessed that based on what we've seen today. They're actually delivering some big blows. Well, they know that Georgia Southern is a primary running team, so they've made some adjustments here throughout the week to try and stop that. Bob sled formation. Cam Brown, the tight end, now is the lead blocker. Outside to Kennedy, he's got a couple of blocks, but not quite enough at the very end. He was pushed out of bounds by Shaw. There you go, doing it all. And you had Cam Brown on the outside blocking one of the defenders, but once they notice that it's an option pitch to Kennedy, they all gather towards him. Now, I know they're not actually going to pitch it to Cam Brown when he lines up in the backfield, <laughs> but it is awfully funny to see a tight end back there as part of the bobsled. I mean, you never know. We've seen some run other running back get an opportunity, one of them being against uh, C.J. Wright in a fake punt against Troy last week. No kidding. We saw a couple big boys with carries for Clemson last year, too. As Remember well, that? yeah. yeah. Alright, third down and five for Southern. Parabacks. Kennedy the motion man. They'll go the other way. Here comes J.D. King. He's got some space past the 40, a first down across midfield. Takes the whole defense with him down to around the 35. Surprised there's not a flag on that. So like am I. The end. I could have sworn there was going to be a horse collar or a face mask or something. Well, first of all, the defensive line up front almost blew up that play, taking down Wirtz. Tyler Glass trying to send J.D. King down, almost wrapped around his neck there. No, no horse collar or anything. Yeah, by the way, that just put him over 600 yards rushing on the air. A 
New first down, and it's Wes Kennedy. He's got a couple of blockers. Rush to the outside, gain of 11, new first down. And that's just the speed of Wesley Kennedy. It shows how much he was missed in the first four games of the season, being able to make people miss. And I'm not just saying this because it's going to sound good for Southern, considering that Minnesota is doing so well now, but I think they would have won that game against the Gophers if Kennedy was in the lineup. I really do. For sure. I mean, it would have been an extra option. Even when you don't give the ball to Kennedy, he's still a threat out there on the field, and you got to have somebody covering him at all times. All right, Georgia Southern now down inside the 30. And they continue to feed Kennedy. That ball's on the ground. He fell on it, though, in a short gain on the play as part of that. I'll tell you, we found out earlier this week that if Logan Wright's going to come back, it would probably be now for a December bowl game, which means that Wes Kennedy will continue to be the big breakaway option along with J.D. King in the backfield. As much as they do miss having a bowling ball power back like Logan Wright, uh, Kennedy getting the ball as much as he has been is just a good thing for this offense. Well, you remember at the beginning of the year, the one-two punch was Logan Wright and Matt LaRoche, and now it's kind of transitioned to Wesley Kennedy and J.D. King. And you could even argue because of that that it's been more explosive. On second down option. Shy keeps it. He's got the blocks he needs. Touchdown, Eagles. Fire that cannon. It's the second rushing touchdown of the day for the quarterback, Shy Wirtz. And he was nearly untouched towards the end. Just great blocking. As you see here, good lead blocks and the rest of just speed from, from Wirtz. Yeah, Malik Murray didn't even have to block the man. He just got in his way and cut him <laughs> off. All right, Georgia Southern about to go up 10 points with a field goal here from Tyler Bass. And he's got it. The Eagles are off and running, Danny. Not bad. They love playing in the rain. 3-0 this year. Yeah, and it just shows at this point of the season how much Shaw Wirtz has gotten more comfortable in the back. You got to remember, he got hurt in the opener against LSU and then slowly worked his way back into the Louisiana game. And even back, even then, he wasn't fully feeling like himself. All right, so at the top of the game here on ESPN+, Plus, we talked about how Georgia Southern is one game away from bowl eligibility, ULM two games away. Uh, interesting, a couple teams already almost certainly in. App State, Louisiana are locks. So Georgia State pretty much there as well. Win for Georgia Southern doesn't guarantee it, but it certainly puts them in the equation much better. Well, there are five bowl games that some belt conference teams will be a part of this season, so Georgia Southern, if they can get a win today, would be the fourth team. And then the rest of their schedule, they're going to face some tough competition as well. Yeah, no kidding. That's the thing is they're going halfway across the country to what will be a cold November Jonesboro, Arkansas to play the Red Wolves next week and then a really good Georgia State team that's over to six wins comes here Thanksgiving weekend. And keep in mind Georgia State has beaten Georgia Southern both times they've been in Statesboro as well. And don't think the players don't know that. Well, they could have returned that one. They won't. So out to the 25-yard line it goes. All right, so speaking of the rest of that schedule for Georgia Southern, that's the interesting thing. We were talking to Bob DeBess and Scott Sloan and Chad Lunsford this week, and they told us, like they've told everyone, they need this game because there are no more guaranteed wins on this schedule. Not at all. And it's just been an incredible challenge of a season for Georgia Southern this year. When you think about it, they opened up against LSU face Louisiana, who's a top team in the West. They got a big win against Appalachian State here a few weeks ago in Boone. The over-under on total wins for them entering this season was six and a half. All right, here's Johnson, first carry of the new drive. No, instead, oh, that was a trick play. Yeah, pass up the middle of the pass Marquise the middle. My McCray. mistake, yeah, they totally got McCray there. That caught us both looking, huh? And for Georgia Southern as well, you consider for Louisiana and Monroe, they're coming into this game with a big win over Georgia State. That game was tied 31-all after the third quarter, and Monroe scored two touchdowns in the fourth to get that win. Yeah, so new first down here. First completion of the game for McCray, a little surprising, considering he's one of their leading receivers. Here's Johnson, bounces a first down to the 41, and they're on the move. 
you know, with that trick play, with the passing play up the middle to McCray, now they kind of open things up a little bit. They can go balance between the run and the pass. That time going to Johnson on the carry. When ULM's gotten their plays today, they've had a couple of big breaks. It hasn't necessarily been four-yard gains. Evans goes down behind the line of scrimmage, and the defense didn't fall for it. Rashad Bird had an interception. Now he's got a sack and a smile. Yeah, it's almost like Evans didn't know where to go after the fake handoff. He saw all the, the shades of blue all around him and had nowhere to go. Call it a loss of two on the play. Second down and 12. Evans actually didn't get sacked last time he played Georgia Southern last year, so already better for this defense. He'll step up and run. He got big pressure. Dives forward inside the Ford again of about five to bring up a makeable third down. Well, you saw there, Georgia Southern had two men rushing on the outside. And once you saw those two go through, Johnson went through the middle and was able to get a couple of yards. All right, third down and five. And although the crowd is, you can hear, is not as big as it's been because this is another rainy, cold game in Statesboro. They're being as loud as they can. Third down and call it a short six. Pressure coming for Evans. That one is hauled in. No, it's knocked down. Kay and White had it go off his hands, and that's one of the only times this year they've targeted him. You saw on that play, there are three receivers on the right side looking for a short pass, but all three covered, so went the other way. Could not hang on to the ball. And this looks like a punt formation, and that's exactly what they're going to do. A little surprising they're not going to pull out a fourth down try here, considering how often they do it. And they're already one for one today, but looks like they're set to kick it away. Porter puts it in the air. The truck gets out of the way. And it is a touchback with 6.40 to go until halftime. Eagle offense starting to soar. They get the ball back up 10 points on ULM. All right, like we said at the top of the broadcast, big game today in terms of bowl eligibility. Here are the spots they're fighting for. Yeah, you got the Cure Bowl, the Camellia Bowl, New Orleans Bowl, the Nova Homes Arizona Bowl, and a new bowl name, the Lending Tree Bowl, formerly the Dollar General Bowl. And the conference champion here in the Sun Belt will play in that New Orleans Bowl. It was Appalachian State last year. Trying to do it again. All right, Eagle offense back up now. They're up 10 points, 17 to 7, with a 6.40 to go here until halftime in Statesboro. Feed to Speedy LaRoche. He falls forward for, again, maybe three yards on the play. And I'll tell you, it is really encouraging to see the fact that, with the exception of last week, the running backs have really started to find a groove with the new three-headed monster, considering that Logan Wright, if they do see him at all, it probably wouldn't be until a December 21st bowl. Yeah, and it's always that next man up mentality. We've seen it mainly with the offensive line and the switches that they've had, but with Logan Wright going down, other people have had to step up, and J.D. King's done a good job. Speaking of going down, that's the defensive lineman Josh Washington, the fifth-year senior from West Monroe. Transfer out of two lanes, stayed in the state. And he is talking to his trainers. That's good news. Are right, taking a look at some of the other possible bowl games. Like we said, a couple right before Christmas. Nova, long way away on New Year's Eve, and then Lending Tree, of course, uh, after the New Year. Georgia Southern fans, of course, remember with fond memories, Camellia Bowl last year. Yeah, won that game 23 to 21 over Eastern Michigan. Tyler Bass, the hero, with a game winning field goal as time expired. Washington able to get up on, with the help of trainers. Of course, they would prefer the chance to play in that one in New Orleans, which will be the conference championship. Yeah. Second down, seven yards to go for the Eagles from the 23-yard line. 
All right, so second down and seven as Washington is off the field. That's LaRoche in the backfield flanking Shy Wirtz. Shy two for four passing today, 20 yards, but more importantly, rushed for a pair of touchdowns. He'll drop back to throw here. He's got pressure downfield and overshot Malik Murray. Not a bad throw, just put it over the wrong shoulder. And Murray had two touchdowns against Troy last week. Was able to beat out the corner, but the throw from Words just sailed out of play. Yeah, I'll tell you, it was interesting. He's certainly had a breakout year compared to last year in Statesboro, but that three catches and 100 yards and pair of touchdowns last week made him, as of right now, their leading receiver. Third down and seven. Eagles only one for four on third down today. Some good blocking. Wirtz tries to turn the corner to the 25. Throws up field, and he's got Darian Anderson. 77 yards. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. I don't see any flags on the field. The question is, was Shy Wirtz? There is a flag back at the 24. I think he was past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you saw he tried to get it out last second. I, I thought so. I was shocked we didn't see a flag, and it didn't come out for a couple seconds after he threw the ball, but that's going to be why he was past the line of scrimmage. Illegal field pass. Offense, number one. It's a penalty spot for the foul. Moss of down. Yeah, that's exactly what we thought, but that would have qualified as another big play DA play for Anderson. And the loss of down as well with the penalty. There you see Shy running, and he threw about the 25-yard line. Just two yards ahead from the line of scrimmage. What a good play. What a good pass just to get it out to, to find Anderson, though. That's got to be a big sigh of relief for Louisiana Monroe because now they get the ball back under six to play. Down by 10. Good snap to Beck around the five. Not a lot of pressure. Good kick. That'll put him down inside the 30. And what a hit from Najee Thompson. Holy cow. Laid the wood. Yeah, and, and going back to that kick by Beck, he's done an incredible job this season. He's been able to send the ball at least 50 yards or so deep. But how about Thompson squaring up and Taking the man down. And yeah, not a fun wake-up call that time for Perry Carter back there to return the kicks. All right, so the offensive drives for UL Monroe today have kind of been feast or famine, Danny. Yeah, we'll see how they answer back here with this drive. Knowing they need a touchdown, they can get one here. Put them in a good spot considering they get the ball back in the second half. All right, from the 27, they swing it out. This is one of their leading receivers on the year, Marcus McCray. That's now his 38th catch of the year. He's got over 400 yards and three touchdowns, but hasn't been used a ton these last couple of weeks. Actually, last week in that win against Georgia State, he was used really in short yardage, only seven catches, but only got 35 yards out of it. Yeah, just trying to get a couple of yards, get a couple of first downs in that game against the Panthers. Peterson, the motion man, is the tight end. They haven't thrown to him yet today, which is shocking. Short carry around the edge for Johnson. They've really been using Peterson as, I would say, a blocker as the tight end, but also kind of as a decoy. When you put him in motion to the open side of the field, of course the linebackers are going to start worrying about him. Yeah, and the linebackers for Jordan Southern have done a good job so far stopping this offense. A couple big tackles, and in case you're just joining us, first drive interception from Rashad Bird. Evans will step up and run. Got back to around the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Randy Wade Jr. hit him first. We talk about, third down. We talk about the, the middle linebackers and Ellis and Burr, but how about the jobs done by Randy Wade Jr. and Jay Bowdry on the outside? Able to contain that quarterback or running back or bring them from getting a, a big-time play. Yeah, by the way, speaking of the defensive players, you might be noticing on the bottom of your screen there, that's Jesse Liptrot. Uh, Kendall Vildor was a game-time decision. We were told this week that he was going to play, but it, it's really been Liptrot today. Third down and seven. All day for Evans. Phillips got to him. That one nearly intercepted. 
Reynard Ellis had his hands on it. That'll force fourth down, but you, you, you cannot give Caleb Evans 20 seconds. Well, even though he had plenty of time in the pocket, he even tried to extend the play on the outside. He had no receivers to throw to. Tried to make something out of nothing, and almost Ellis came down with the ball. Yeah, Raymond Johnson was the first to break around the outside and put pressure on him. So they'll get the ball back with about four minutes until halftime. Rain and Wynn continuing to make some kind of factor with these punts. This one's down inside the 20. All right, pretty quick turnaround for these two teams. Eagles get the ball again with 3.50 to go until halftime. Up 10 on the Warhawks. All right, about four minutes to go until halftime. And coming up at halftime, a couple great stories from here on campus for Georgia Southern. Yeah, Rosemary Kramer, who's set to partake in the Olympics and also under the helmet with Todd Bradley and just learning about his story. It's really something and what he's had to go through over the last couple of years. And Amy Zimmer will have that for you with the newest edition of Under the Helmet at halftime here on ESPN+. Plus. But back on the field, Eagles by 10, four minutes to try to get down the field. Wurtz will run the option, turn up field, past the 20 toward the 30-yard line. Big run and a first down for Shy Wurtz in a gain of about 15. And he was so composed running through with about three defenders around him. And I don't believe anyone really saw him until they got past. And when they tried to get him, got tripped up. Eagle rushing yards have been pretty well distributed. J.D. King over 50. Shy Wurtz now about 50 with that last run. Wes Kennedy's got about 35. Mark Mashad split to the top of the screen. Shy's not been afraid to air it out today. They've already passed five times. And Kennedy hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Really good heads up tackle that time by CJ, by rather by Sam Miller. They've gone to Kennedy a lot more here in the first half than usual. That was his ninth carry. And usually they go between Shy Words and JD King. Then go to Kennedy with open space, and that's where he's so effective and an X factor for the Eagles. Big playmaker. Absolutely. Breaks it wide open for him. Down inside three minutes till halftime here. Second down and seven, and the wind's starting to pick back up. That's Kennedy in the backfield. They'll run the option. Actually, it's a reverse. Here comes Malik Murray, but the defense was ready for it. They push him out at the 36 or 37-yard line. He didn't even get to the first down. I'm a little surprised by that. When the Eagles pull that out of the playbook, usually it goes for 50 yards. And right there, you had a man on Shy Wurtz right before he gave it up. It just shows that at some points throughout this half, Louisiana Monroe is blowing up a couple of plays for Georgia Southern. Yeah, good for them for not biting. All right, third down and two. The Eagles only one for four on third down today. Warhawks blitzing three linebackers off the edge. Wurtz tucks and runs. He's got the first down and good for him as he loses his mouth guard in the process. They brought eight guys on that play. Yeah, I was about to say, I saw six at first and they just bull rushed that offensive line. And they took the bait too because once again, Wurtz was able to get it out right before he went down. You know, right, Wurtz was able to keep it, I'm sorry and get out of harm's way to get the first. Well, that's what running this offense for three years will, will do for you. Even when you see the play is getting blown up, you can tuck it and run it and get around the corner with confidence. They took the bait on J.D. King up the middle. New first down, Diamond backfield, all three of them back there with Wirtz. Kennedy, cross midfield, gain of seven yards, maybe eight. And you can tell the defense is just falling for the fake every time. That time, you had a man try to go straight up on Wurtz. Timeout. Georgia Southern. And I was wondering, I was wondering with 120 to go if they were just going to keep running plays, but they are going to call a timeout. They've got two to go here until halftime. Nobody called a timeout at all until now. This is the first timeout we've seen. Yeah, and obviously the reason they want this is because they want to get a shot at a touchdown, a field goal, and a touchdown will make you feel a lot more comfortable headed into the break. And I think we'll see Shy go deep here on a play or two. I think so, too. We saw Darren Anderson have a big play called back, but we've also seen him throw it deep to Malik Murray, 
And although they have not targeted him, we saw Dexter Carter go way downfield once or twice. Yeah, one of these guys didn't get open, but with this 4-2-5 defense from Monroe, it's made it a lot difficult for Shy Wars to find an open man. And don't forget, Shy, although he's had some success today, is only two for five passing. And although the ULM defense statistically struggles, they do lead the conference in interceptions. Their secondary has ripped down nine. Yeah, and they're led by Corey Strauder, who has five, and we really haven't seen him at all in this half. Second and three. Shy will look downfield. Instead, he'll turn upfield. Did not get to the first down. Got to the 47, so a yard short for third and short. And it looks like they're just going to let this clock run. They will down to about a minute. Trying to catch ULM off guard. That's King in the backfield, their power back. They're going to feed him behind a couple of blockers, and it looks like he got it by a matter of inches. So that'll temporarily stop the clock while they set up the new chains. This could be close. From our vantage point up here in the press box, he fell forward, and it clearly looked like he was standing up and got there. Take another look here. Although the referees are actually going to say no. Well, there we go. Now they're moving it first down. Wirtz throws to the far side of the field. He's got Mark Michaud. Rather, that's Dexter Carter. First time they've actually gotten it to him today. He's up to the 31-yard line. And that's his first official catch this season. Redshirt Junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, they've been trying to get him open a couple times today. Not a big surprise. They were finally able to get it done. And that will be a first down regardless. Got to the 32, 33-yard line. It'll probably take one or two more passes to get them to where they need to be, although they do have two timeouts. Mashad split to the bottom of the screen. Darian Anderson to the top. He's going to throw for a big play, D.A. And he'll make the big play. Touchdown, Darian Anderson. But a flag in the backfield at the 42. And I think that might be a late hit, and you see Wirtz went down as he got it out. Threw it, and it could be rough in the passer. Maybe. The Eagles are celebrating like this one's going to stand. And Wirtz got the ball out quick. He had six men coming through. Personal foul. Targeting defense number seven. The previous play is in the review. That was Cortez Cisco, the linebacker. We'll have to get a look at the replay. Maybe he hit Wurtz, and that's why the targeting was because he wouldn't have been on Darien. Uh, but anyway, that is Anderson's second touchdown of the season. That's why they call him Big Play DA. It's always a deep ball. Yeah, he had a lot of big plays last season, and even one last week against Troy. Able to get another one. Okay, We're going to have to get a look at the replay here on ESPN Plus, but interestingly enough, they actually have not changed the score on the scoreboard yet. It is still 17 to 7. I think right before he let it go, trying to see, there's Cisco. Here it comes around the edge. Oh, yeah, he is the one that hit Warts. Oh, that is helmet contact. Yeah. Helmet towards right up to upper upper body towards the neck a little bit. Although can we say, even with the guy coming right in his face, what a throw Shy placed right in the bread basket for Anderson. That's just perfect. This is the second targeting call. First one was Tyler Glass. Yeah, gosh, I think this one might stand. After further review, the targeting has been confirmed. Number seven is disqualified from the game. The result of the play is a touchdown. Fire the cannons. Here's Cisco delivering the hit on Wirtz. Definite helmet yeah. to helmet contact. That one's no question. Yeah, got the bottom part of Wirtz's helmet. So Cisco out and he led the Warhawks in tackles this season with almost 80. And so if 
him being out, Travion Webster will come in and replace Cisco here on the linebacker spot. All right, so Georgia Southern is going to feel awfully comfortable headed into halftime. Tyler Bass here to make it 24 to 7. How about that? Chad Lunsford said, hey, no more falling behind and needing second half points is all they could ask for pretty much. And how about the first half from Shaw Wartz? Three total touchdowns yep. on the afternoon so far. Two on the ground, one in the air. Combined 121 yards of offense. Well, and I'll tell you, too, obviously there are other important games today in the Sun Belt Conference, but if... Shai continues to do his thing in the second half. He's going to be a, a consideration for Sunbelt Player of the Week. For sure, and it's just great to see him be himself over the last couple of weeks. Well, I'll tell you what, he's certainly gotten back to form after he had to miss a couple games early in the season, but he looks so at home today, doesn't he? For sure. I mean, even in those games when he first came back from, he, he didn't feel like himself, and he didn't get his first rushing touchdown until he gets Appalachian State. He already has two today. Majority of the, the last couple of games, he's been relying on J.D. King and Wesley Kennedy to get into the end zone. All right, short field to kick with. Tyler Bass had the distance for a field goal. Can't see from that angle whether it shot through the uprights, but either way, 37 seconds and a long field to go for the Warhawks. And not to mention, Shy more so has gotten the job done in the air, more so than on the ground this year. Well, certainly true. So as we hit halftime, Shy is four for seven passing with 67 yards, which is impressive because, again, don't forget, starting that drive, he was two for five, so he was two for two on that drive with the touchdown. On the other side of things, Caleb Evans has had some good help from his offensive line, but not a lot of help from much else. First and ten, linebackers coming. He steps up, and down he goes. They were ready for him that time. And on the tackle first it was Vleem. And Evans had nowhere to go. He was going to go to the right side, but Vleem was right there to take him down. He was looking towards his left, just trying to get a quick pass. Well, I'll tell you what, his offensive line is giving him a lot of time, but his receivers just aren't getting open. Good coverage from the defense. Well, that's what they knew they had to do today. We were talking to... The coaches before the game, and they said they got to get pressure on him and make sure that no one's getting open. And that defense did an awfully good job in the first half. As we hit the break, Georgia Southern 24 and ULM 7. How about that? We'll go down to Amy Zimmer in just a second. She's got head coach Matt Viator of the ULM Warhawks. Amy. Coach, Cortez Cisco disqualified before the half. How will the team adjust? Oh, we just have to play somebody else. Uh, our bigger problems are we haven't gotten any rhythm offensively at all. And uh, we get the second half kickoff and hopefully can start something. What changes need to be made in the second half? We need to move the ball more consistently for sure. I think we've held up a little while on defense, but uh, haven't moved. we had one good drive uh, to tie it up at 7-7. We haven't moved it since. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Great. All right, thanks, Amy. Eagles up at the break, 24 to 7, nearly doubling up ULM in terms of total yards. Halftime show is coming up next from a rainy Statesboro on ESPN Plus. We've got some happy Eagles at halftime, 24 to 7, the score at the break. Dan, Amy, she's got Chad. Out of the game, Rashad Bird with a huge interception. How did that set the tone for this game? Well, obviously, anytime we get a turnover and then go put the ball in the end zone, that's obviously a great start. That means we start fast. Um, and so, you know, anytime we can get that type of momentum early, that's good for us. What was the message to the team in the locker room? Well, the message all week has been this is going to be a player-led football game. And they did a tremendous job in the first half. And so in the second, in, in halftime, I went and talked to them about, okay, you did it for the first half. Now let's see how we're going to be player-led in the second half. And they're doing a great job right now. Now I want to see them finish it. Thank you, Coach. G-A-T-A. -A. 
All right, thank you so much, Amy. So they're happy. Georgia Southern fans already happy in the stands. You can tell. Uh, Greg Talbot, Danny Wad. Danny, I would say that was the best first half of Eagle football we've seen all year. And Chad Lunford said it was player led. Rashad Burns set the tone with the interception. And how about Shy Words? Three first half touchdowns, one in the air, two on the ground. He's done a great job so far leading the Eagles. He yeah, certainly has. Let's go ahead and take a look at first half stats. We mentioned before halftime that in terms of total offense, Eagles have uh, nearly doubled up ULM. Yeah, and, and Shy Words almost has more total yards himself than the Louisiana Monroe offense. So he's done tremendous so far, also with the helps of Wesley Kennedy and J.D. King as well. Now it's up for Georgia Southern to hold on in the lead in the second half. Monroe's going to start with the ball first. So let's see how the Warhawks answer. Yeah, for what it's worth, it has been nearly 20 games since Georgia Southern has not won when leading at halftime. So they're Certainly a better second half team when they've got the lead. That said, uh, you have to imagine the halftime break gave them some time to figure out Caleb Evans and the rest of this ULM offense. You've you got to imagine they're going to come out with something hot in the second half. And not to mention defensively, they're a man down with Cortez Cisco being ruled out due to that targeting call on the touchdown pass from Shy Words mm -hmm. Darian Anderson. All right, so as you can see with that shot of Chad, it is still raining, although it's not as bad as it was for the New Mexico State and Coastal Carolina games, this is a team that is used to playing in the rain. They are 3-0 and in conditions like that this year. Of course, the two home games for Coastal and New Mexico State and then the big one up at App. So they're used to it, and I would actually think they're starting to become used to it, and I think they're starting to like it. I think they're taking on the identity. I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're able to play and compete in these types of conditions, it just helps build the team up a lot. And you're right, Georgia Southern has embraced that over the last couple of weeks. Now, keep in mind as well, Greg, if the Eagles win this game, they'll be bowl eligible. But more importantly, they'll be keeping an eye on the game later on tonight when App State travels to Atlanta to take on Georgia State. Now, explain that. Why? Because App is 4-1. and one. Their one loss is to Georgia Southern. If Georgia State beats App then and Georgia Southern holds on to get this win over Louisiana Monroe, then it will be a tie in the East Division between Georgia Southern and Georgia State because both of them would have wins over the Mountaineers. And that will come to a head in two weeks on Thanksgiving weekend in Atlanta, rather here in Statesboro as they come from Atlanta, Georgia State at Georgia Southern. But like we mentioned, the away teams win that rivalry. Georgia Southern will be looking to beat Georgia State in Statesboro for the first time. And I remember when that rivalry started, Georgia Southern went on the road back when the Panthers were playing in the old Georgia Dome, and they turned the Georgia Dome into Paulson Stadium North with a big-time win in that game, and then the Panthers came back and brought that heat to Statesboro and got revenge. They did indeed. Okay, so this ULM offense showed some flashes in the first half. Josh Johnson hasn't been able to break anything huge, but the offensive line has been giving Caleb Evans absolutely all day. Hand off to Johnson. He tries to cut the edge, and Jesse Liptrop there to bring him down for a gain of three or four yards. And Liptrop has done a good job replacing Kendall Vildor here in this game and including last week, too, at Troy. Well, I'll tell you what's interesting. Everyone around the program was pretty much assuming and agreed upon the fact that we would see Kendall Vildor back today. Not the case. Yeah, we, we talked to the coaches on Thursday. They said he was going to be good to go, but things changing up leading up to this game. Back on the ground to go to Johnson, and once again, the defense there to bring him down. That was Vleem. All right, so the Georgia Southern defense has made a couple of big plays around the line of scrimmage, behind the line of scrimmage. Got a sack in there on Evans. The defensive line has been doing their job. What Scott Sloan asked them this week, which is get pressure so we don't have to bring the linebackers, because if we blitz... Then all of a sudden, Evans is going to be able to have some mismatches. Yeah, the goal is to contain Evans in the pocket, and Trevor Blaine has been leading this defensive line. Every game, it's a different defensive lineman leading the charge. Sometimes it's Raymond Johnson, other times Ty Phillips. This time it's Blaine. Big pressure off the edge. It's Raynard Ellis. That ball is loose and incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. And I'll tell you, I would say is that's a three and out to really start things here in the second half for ULM. The Georgia Southern defense has followed Scott Sloan's orders and scheming to a T. They bring the occasional the linebacker. The 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 ball beyond the line of Fourth down. Uh, they've been bringing the occasional linebacker off the edge, but really they've been getting just good pressure with your down lineman, and that's what Sloan said needed to happen, and it has. Yeah, it's just been incredible how this 3-4 defense has really 
been able to help get victories, and Najee Thompson almost with a blocked punt. That one nearly blocked, takes a good ULM bounce down inside the 25 toward the Eagle 20-yard line. Okay, uh, first half MVP, Shywartz, yes? yes? For sure, absolutely. I mean, he's done a great job. He's back into a, in a, in a form that we've seen before last season when his team went 10-3. and three. No kidding, and he's had some great games since he did return from injury. This is the most comfortable I have seen him look, I'll say that. Absolutely, from the get, from out the gate, yes. Shy has been playing very well throughout this game. He's had some great performances already this season. As you recall, the triple overtime win against Coastal Carolina, throwing back-to-back -to -back touchdowns in that game. But from start to finish, or at least from start to right now, Shy Wirtz is playing at a, at a pace where it's equivalent to what we've seen last season. J.D. King <laughs> spins forward for a nice game, and that'll put Georgia Southern over 170 total rushing yards today. <laughs> And like we said before halftime, it's been pretty well spread out. J.D. King, that just put him over 60 yards. shy has got about 55, and Wes Kennedy has about 50. And for J.D. King, you know, we've talked about how he has transitioned into this leading power back for Georgia Southern, but he's got to be happy playing very well this season, considering only last year when he was at Oklahoma State, he only had 153 yards total all year. Now above 600 this season. And Wirtz runs the option. He's lucky that one was not stripped as he falls forward past the 35, and he's got a first down. And I'll tell you, you know Shy is comfortable when he is happy to pitch the ball. We all love watching the Shy Wirtz play when he keeps it himself, turns up field, and goes 30 yards. But the offense seems to, over the last year or so, really hit a nice groove when Shy only takes it upfield when he wants to. Yeah, well, he's got the weapons. He's got different guys he can give it to that can make plays. I'll tell you, he's gotten some great lead blocks from the tight ends and receivers today as well. Malik Murray, the motion man. Feed to King. Falls forward toward the 40, gain of three yards. And you also got to give credit to the offensive line because they've had a lot of injuries throughout the season. They mm -hmm. missed three starters from last year prior to the beginning of the year. Did a bunch of different injuries throughout the season. And they've still been able to do a good job getting lead blockers out, creating room for the running backs to move upfield. Interesting to see a couple of new tight ends in there as well. Bo Johnson, a true freshman tight end, has been getting some time as a blocking tight end today that has not been gone downfield yet though second and seven option again Wirtz gets rid of it just in time to but again by Ryan on wow yeah, literally right down that way. sometimes it's a little bit risky comfort to the point of making you nervous is what you're <laughs> yeah, trying to say saying, yes <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that and be as comfortable as him, but it just shows how well he's been playing throughout the game. He is a third-year starting quarterback on this team. He has internalized this offense. Third down and two. Eagles on third down, three for six, 50% in the first half. Kennedy got to go back before he goes forward, and the ULM defense there to knock him down for a loss on the play, but a flag is in the middle of the field between the hashes. So we will see. Interesting spot on that play on the flag. Holding. Offense. Number 74. That penalty is declined. Result of play is fourth down. Travel Lawrence Edwards on the hold. All right, so a couple of awfully good runs there for Georgia Southern on their first drive of the second half, but the defense is largely getting it done in these first couple of minutes. And I'll tell you what's interesting, too, is even at the beginning of this second half, it was pouring in just over the course of the last five or six minutes. It stopped. It's inclement. Well, Beck is under center. It looked like they might run a play. Instead... They're either going to call a timeout or take the flag.
delay game, offense, number 38, five-yard penalty, fourth down. We saw the fake punt last week against Troy where C.J. Wright was able to get the first down yeah, for well, there's a no reason. There. To, there's no reason to pull that out here with Beck. You never know. It was close. Well, he's got a big leg, and it, that, that does not cost him anything. Back to receive his Carter around his own 20, and he's taken a couple licks today returning punts. Calls for the fair catch, and good for him. That was pretty smart. That'll take us to a break. Georgia Southern up 24-7 on ULM early in the third quarter. Looking at scores around the Sun Belt Conference, pretty much what we expected. Coastal on top of Arkansas State by a touchdown. Troy taking care of Texas State, but boy on ESPNU tonight at 7.30. App State, Georgia State, that is the big one. Yeah, that's a big one. Georgia State wins, and Georgia Southern holds on. Then technically a three-way race for the East Division, but it would go down between Georgia Southern and Georgia State, and that would go down here in Statesboro in two weeks. Evans throws over the middle, and this time, really good complete pass. He's got Perry Carter over the middle, down across the 35. They almost never throw to Carter. They usually use him as a special teams guy, but big-time reception there and puts him into southern territory, catches him off guard. And yeah, that's his 11th catch on the year, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Good slant route up the middle. He used his speed and broke off a tackler, too, to get downfield. And yeah, more of a one kind of catch-a-game guy. Down to the 35, Evans has some blockers, runs the option, and gets spun down. Handful of guys get there first. Kind of hard to pick who was first among Eagles that time, maybe Lane Acton. Just surrounded by a, new, a number of Eagles there. This is really the first time in quite some time that we've seen the Warhawks getting good field position downfield. Well, I'll tell you what, they had one really great kind of trick play earlier that caught both of us off guard in the first half. I wouldn't say that was a trick play to find Carter, although they threw to him about once a game. So they've had some luck with some kind of trickeration. Coverage to Peterson. Incomplete, and Kendrick Duncan was in his face. First time they've targeted Josh Peterson. By the way, uh, Peterson entering this game, 400 yards on the year, seven touchdowns. He's just not open. Yeah, I haven't really gone to him that much. Until now. That's his first target. Yeah. it would be interesting to see if they try to go to him more well, throughout they, the second half. You almost think they have to, right? All right, so third down and six for the Warhawks. Clock is not on their side. Johnson. Man, he can barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Really good start to the second half from this Eagle defense. Ran right into a wall. Things getting chippy down there. But the Warhawks is unsuccessful on third downs. 0 for 7 now. The yeah, Southern's third down defense has been all right this year. It's been their third down offense that has been the problem. So it's fourth down. It looks like ULM is going to keep their offense on the field and at least try to draw Georgia Southern offside. But in case you're just joining us, don't forget, ULM has gone for it 22 times this year, and they've converted on 12. They go for it more than anyone in the league. Evans with plenty of time. He's looking downfield. Johnson hauled in. First down inside the 20. You know, for a moment there, I thought that Evans was going to run until you saw Rashad Bird well, he follow, had, following Evans. He had too. to make a decision. He was, was one on two, you know. Yeah, Got to pick one. Able to lead Johnson to make a good catch to keep his drive alive. So once again, the fourth down conversion ends up working out for ULM. They're into the red zone. Entering this game, they were 23 for 38 on touchdowns on red zone trips. They'll go for another one here, and it's hauled in by Hodo inside the five. That one looked like offensive pass interference, but they're not going to call it. I'm about to say, you saw right before he made the catch, pushing off the cornerback. Kind of hard to miss. Pushing off <laughs> Brinson. Well, okay. Well, it looked harder at first, but... Didn't look quite as egregious on the replay. No. All right, so first down and goal from inside the five. ULM trying to score for the first time since their opening drive. On the ground of Vaughn. He had their first touchdown of the game. And it 
looks like he was stopped around the one. And he was. Clock will keep ticking down inside seven minutes. Yeah, last time he was able to extend over for the touchdown. This time, just short. And it looks like they'll keep him on the field. He's a bowling ball, five foot eight and 220 pounds. He's a power back, and this is what he's for. But it's Evans on the QB keeper. He's got it. And ULM strikes early here in the second half. And that's his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Man, had it pretty easy with the fake handoff. You know they're going to keep an eye on Vaughn. So on the outside, able to pretty much walk it in for the touchdown. Yeah, really nice play call, huh? I think the Eagles were expecting the running back, too. All right, here's Porter. Up and through, and it's back to a 10-point game with 6.40 to go. In the third quarter, Eagle offense wants to get it going after the break. Now that ULM might be making a push. All right, taking a look at the Sun Belt standings here. ULM can still make a push in that division, but that those th four teams on the top of the Sun Belt East, Danny, that is a dog-eat-dog -dog world, huh? Yeah, because Troy is now in it with the win over Georgia Southern last week. So, they're in it, yeah, for sure. And they're already dominating Texas State right now, so they're hoping for a couple of upsets on their end. That's a team that has plenty of talent. They just had to find their groove once Neil Brown left for that job at West Virginia. They were searching for their identity the first half of the year. Looks like they're starting to settle in, huh? And not to mention, they were without the preseason offensive player of the year, and B.J. Smith had an injury. That as well. Here comes Kennedy choosing to return. This one only gets it out to the 16-yard line, but a late flag comes in from the ref on the far side as well. <laughs> Still waiting to hear this call from the referees. We saw one come in from the far side judge. The one came in from the middle of the field as well. So maybe one got thrown because the other got thrown. We'll find out. There are two fouls on the play, both by the receiving team. During the return, Holby, receiving team, number 28. That's half the distance to the goal. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, receiving team, number 28. That's another half of this is to the goal. First down, Georgia Southern. That is number 28's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. And that'll be Amari Thompson. Brother Dexter Carter Jr., my mistake. Yeah, Carter must have <coughs> didn't like the, uh, the call and then was frustrated afterwards. All right, so Georgia Southern has worked themselves now into dangerous territory. They're taking over first down and 10 from inside their own five. They're going from the three yard line here and you know that ULM is going to bring the house. Only four down linemen, but the line looking like the linebackers might come here. And a couple of them do. They feed J.D. King. Scampers out toward the 10. That's a good starting run. And they were almost able to get a man off sides. They saw one of the defensive linemen Jumped there was able to hold on last second before crossing the line of scrimmage. That's exactly what you want if you're Georgia Southern. And a long drive downfield followed by some points is really what you're hoping for out of this drive. If you can accomplish those two missions at once, start to eat the clock and score. Yeah, and you know that's something that Georgia Southern does really well on offense. Second and three. Yo, Kennedy wrapped up in the backfield. Great tackle around the edge by Rashad Harding. You don't usually see any of the running backs, let alone the speedy West Kennedy, get wrapped up for a loss. Well, you, if you look at a couple of the runs here for Georgia Southern, 
the big plays that they've had have been from runs on the outside. Yes. I mean, the defensive lineman in the interior for Louisiana Monroe has done a good job from limiting big plays going in between the linemen. Yeah, this is not the, the Matt Breida-led team of a couple years ago where it was the 70-yard up-the-gut runs. Right. Eagles three for seven tonight on third. Play action, Wurtz looking downfield, way downfield. There's plenty of shoving going on. He went for Anderson, and I don't think I see any flags. All right, referees keeping the flags in the pockets this uh, last half hour, huh, Danny? couple ones in the end zone there, too, that didn't get called. Josh Newton just was able to avoid <laughs> pass interference, just <laughs> get his hands on Anderson. All right. Fourth down coming up. A lot of fans and some of the Georgia Southern coaches upset. You see, you saw Chad Lunsford visibly frustrated. Well, they were grappling and pushing each other quite literally that whole way past the five-yard line. Beck puts that one in the air. Pretty good around midfield. No surprise that Carter doesn't want to get dropped again. There have been a couple times where Najee Thompson was just yeah. <laughs> ready to lay him out. A couple, after that first couple times time, he did. After that first time, Carter's like, nah, I'm going to call a fair catch. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take their free yardage and not get absolutely dropped. All right, so ULM, all of a sudden, back within 10 points. Chad clearly not happy with that no pass interference call. But even more importantly, if ULM somehow manages to get points on the board here, Danny, we're back to a one-possession game. Right, a good stop from Louisiana Monroe. Was that Chad Lunsford giving the ref an example of what the P.I. looked like on that play with Lane Ecton? A little bit. I think so. Here's Evans to the outside. Gets to around midfield in a gain of about five yards. Nice demo, Chad. Maybe make a YouTube demo of pass interference. Chad Lunsford, TikTok star. <laughs> oh my goodness. With pass interference videos. You never know. Not afraid of social media, that one. Second down and four. Near side to McCray. They've used him sparingly today, although he is one of their best receivers. He's across midfield. Short game. That'll bring up third down. Yeah, they tried to go to McCray on the flat route, similar to a wide receiver screen. Had a block, but didn't get a chance to go far. Well, you know, it's like last week. They really used him in short situations last week. Pretty much just five-yard passes. You got to give credit to Jesse Liptrot. Redshirt senior out of Atlantic Beach, Florida, stepping in for Kendall Vildor. Third down and two. ULM has not converted on third today. And it doesn't look like they will this time either. It's a huge sack on the play. Jay Bowdry got to him back behind the 45. And that just goes back to what Scott Sloan and this Eagles defense want to do, containing Caleb Evans to where if he tried to bounce out, he wouldn't be able to go far. He tried to spin and turn the other way, but Jay Bowdry was there to make the stop. Him and Ray Dardellis were there. Well, here we were in a situation where it looked like ULM was lining up for another great drive and a touchdown to put him right back in it. But as Jared Porter kicks this one away, that was an absolutely huge defensive stop for Georgia Southern. How about that? That one down inside the 20-yard line with a fair catch for West Kennedy. Eagles still by 10 as we approach the late in the third quarter. Couple of second half injury updates here. Down to Amy with more. Amy. Seven minutes in the first half. John Washington went down. I talked with their athletic trainer, and he told me that it was a lower leg injury. He went into the locker room for further evaluation, and I was just told that the game. Greg, back to you. All right, thank you, Amy. So the Eagles get the ball back up 10 points here. 319 to go in the third quarter. Only scoring we've seen here in the third was a nice drive. Punched it with a touchdown from Caleb Evans from ULM. But Shy Wirtz hits Malik Murray. Did he haul that one in? Yes, he did. Good completion as he fell down. He saw Murray going out on that route, and Wirtz was able to connect with him. Instead of trying to go deep down the field for the big play, instead goes on the outside to Murray.
Georgia Southern has so many weapons as wide receiver players. It's good to get them more involved and keep the defense guessing. Just past the 30, new first down and 10. Shai tries to run the option, but a great come-up tackle that time by Holmes. Brother Starks. Yeah, Kerry Starks going in there for the tackle. And, you know, when you look at last week, the way Georgia Southern was able to get a couple of scores in the air, and maybe with that game, you're starting to see a more balanced outing on the offensive side from Shai Well, tonight. when you think about the 2018 season, they were really able to keep defenses guessing because you could turn up field and see Kennedy or Darian Anderson hauling in a 50-yard pass. That's part of what made last year's team so great to watch. Option again, and here's LaRoche. Defense ready for it. That defense has been ready for the option in the second half so far. Yeah, they definitely made some good adjustments there. Now it's up for the offense for the Warhawks to get back into it as we're close to the fourth. Yeah, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty inside. Two minutes to go until we do get to the fourth quarter. Might be Mo Bamba time again here in Statesboro. Looks like we have a temporary injury timeout here on the field. This is Nick Ingram, one of their safeties. Looks like his left leg. Maybe his ankle. Grit in his teeth. All right, we'll take a quick break here on ESPN+. Plus. Hopefully he's all right after this. Over. All right, back for Georgia Southern's offense. Third down and 10 from around their own 30-yard line, trying to get things going as we near the end of the third quarter. Wurtz once again looking downfield. That is off the hands of J.D. King coming out of the backfield. It'll bring up fourth down, and I'll tell you, outside of that one good drive from ULM that resulted in a touchdown, we've seen a lot of defense here in the third quarter. Yeah, this has definitely been a defensive mind in the second half. Both defenses getting the job done. Monroe able to get one touchdown so far in the quarter. Georgia Southern has been stopped in all their drives so far here in the quarter. Yeah, the defenses have been the star of the last 15 minutes or so. Back to put it in the air. Carter back around the 24-yard line. He got hit. There's a flag. That one's going to come back because Beck got absolutely leveled back at the 20. Yeah, slow to get up. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep. Unintentional, of course. At the very end, Miles Cole just flipped over a blocker. And his feet ended up hitting back, and I think that's what the officials might be saying, that there might not be a flag. Running into the kicker, defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay, fourth down. Right call. Well, you can hear that there are some fans who are unhappy with that call. Part of having rain and wind means that there are just less people here, and if someone gets up against a microphone, they're more audible. Classic. Georgia Southern just unhappy that it's not a worse penalty because now they've got to trot back back out there and have them do it again instead of getting the first down out of it. Yeah, and where they're out in the field, I don't see them going for a fake or anything like no, that. No, no, no. They'll just do it again. A couple of fans still upset. <laughs> yeah, but you can be sure the refs are hearing them, though. Fair catch inside the 15. Oh, he saw ghosts. That ball's on the ground inside the five. And Georgia Southern's got it. Randy Wade recovery. And Danny, there were only so many times 
that poor Perry Carter was almost going to get railroaded before this happened. He's been on an island all day, almost getting drilled on these. And Najee Thompson almost had it. Oh, he knew. Look at him. He knew. I mean, we said it before. Thompson made a beeline for him on multiple times ever since he got lit up earlier in the first half. Well, he's, he's been, been seeing ghosts. You could see him on every fair catch just getting nervous as it gets toward him. And Wade showing off the turnover chain. All right, so Georgia Southern gets to great field position inside the ULM 5. They could turn a 10-point lead into 16 and really make things comfy as we get closer to the fourth quarter, and ULM might want a timeout on the field there. Timeout, Georgia Southern. They're first in the half. And it's Georgia Southern timeout. that wants a timeout. Just want to take a few seconds and get the right play call out there to punch it in. We'll take a look at this again. And poor Perry Carter. He saw Najee Thompson headed right for him again, and Randy Wade heads up inside the five. And yeah, this time, he had two men on him. Thompson and Birdsong. Like Sam Darnold out there. I'm seeing ghosts, man. <laughs> Well, now the question is, can Georgia Southern capitalize off of it at the goal line? Well, Georgia Southern entering this game, 12 touchdowns on 25 red zone trips this year. They've relied an awful lot on Tyler Bass. Now, that is not what they want here. The referees are actually going to mark this ball down at the six-yard line is where Randy Wade fell on it. Shy Wirtz already has two rushing touchdowns today. Takes the snap, he hands to J.D. King. Uh, he gets near the line of scrimmage, actually driven back for maybe a loss of one. And that'll take us down to inside a minute left in the third. Yeah, King unable to go nowhere on that play. It's going to be difficult to see how Georgia Southern tried to get in the end zone because you saw four or five defensive backs, defensive backs all right at the one near the end zone. Yep. So they tried to go up the middle. It didn't work. You wonder if they go for the same play or if Wurtz tries to keep it here. Well, Darren Anderson is split to the top of your screen, and they've already thrown to him in the end zone today. Second down and Cole. They'll go back to J.D. King, and he's got it. Eagles lead by 16 in Statesboro. And that's what you want. It's JD's first touchdown of the day. 11 carries for 82 yards, and King that time able to break through, scoring a touchdown. His fifth this season. When Chad Lunsford talks about winning games, sometimes it requires the defense, sometimes it takes special teams, and that is now two huge turnovers by ULM that have turned into big time points for Georgia Southern because don't forget that fumble there was also that first interception that they threw on their first drive that Southern turned into points this game is not nearly so far out of reach for ULM if they hadn't committed those two turnovers well here's the thing Chad Lunford always talks about winning the game in all four elements offense defense special teams and on the sideline as well they didn't win any of those battles against Troy last week. Right. But you're already seeing here tonight, the offense doing a good job with Shy Works, three total touchdowns, J.D. King with one as well. The defense making big-time plays, special teams just there with the with the fumble, able to recover. And the sideline having a good time. Well, we have about 25 football seconds until it is Mo Bamba time again in Statesboro. what has become the calling card of this year's team. Here's Tyler Bass to put this one in the air. And ULM will need to turn a really good first couple of minutes in the fourth quarter if they want a chance in this one. Because right now it would take a pair of touchdowns and a pair of two-point conversions. No chance to return this one, so we'll see a play or two from ULM before we head to the fourth quarter and light up the phones and do Mo Bamba 
Danny, that was uh, about as good a turnaround as you could have expected for Georgia Southern there to turn that into touchdown. And really, 16 points is a heck of a lot different than 10 when you think about it with certain time left and the way they run the clock. And overall, it's a big turnaround from what they've done this season. I mean, you look at it at the beginning of the year, they went 1-3 and three in their first four games, and mm-hmm. they went out in the month of October. Had a bit of a setback against Troy, but bouncing back here against the Warhawks tonight. All right, Evans out of the gun. They take it from the 25. A couple more plays to go here in the third quarter. Underneath pass. That ball's on the ground. Kendrick Duncan's got it. I think that was just an incomplete pass to Zach Jackson. Well, he, he went until the whistle was blown. There was no... Okay, so that's a complete pass, and he was down. It was down by contact for Jackson. He went down, then the ball went out of his hands. For a second there, I thought it was a touchdown. That would have been another big moment But either the way, defense. All right, it is Mo Bamba time in Statesboro. We go to the fourth, light up the phones. Eagles up 31 to 14 on ULM. A win away from bowl eligibility. All right, time for the fourth quarter after a little Mobamba. Georgia Southern on defense. ULM trying to get this thing back a little bit closer. 31-14 Eagles. It's second down and five for the Warhawks. Into coverage. Bad throw to the wrong shoulder that time of Jonathan Hodo. Bringing up third down for ULM. Okay, Danny, really interesting third quarter. A lot of defense, but a couple of big, weird plays that swung the game. Yeah, I mean, the muff punt really... Gave the momentum to Georgia Southern here as we're about to begin the fourth, or beginning the fourth. Turned into a quick touchdown before the third quarter ended. And this defense is having a, having a fun time out here tonight. Look at Ty Phillips throwing it down. Well, they're happy because look at that graphic. They have not allowed ULM to convert on third down. Evans is lucky that ball was not stripped, but it's intercepted anyway. On the way back, here comes Donald Rutledge inside the 10, and he takes it back. This Eagle defense is on fire. 37-14 Eagles. Get yourself that chain, Donald. (laughs) Yeah, the first interception for Donald Rutledge this season, and it turns into a pick six. For a moment there, Evans thought he escaped trouble, breaking away from that potential sack, but then throwing it straight to Rutledge, who takes it back 42 yards for the touchdown. This does not look anything remotely like the defense we saw last week at Troy. What a change. Well, this team had a chip on their shoulder. Right. I mean, they know that they're better than, than what they showed last week against Troy. By a couple hundred yards. Yeah. This defense has swagged. The offense has been complimenting it. The special teams has uh, really been strong, as we have seen today on both sides of it for Georgia Southern. And now they are more than doubling up UL Monroe with 14 and a half minutes to go in this one. And I'll tell you, I feel comfortable saying this. Uh, Chad Lunsford, when we talked to him this week, he was very well aware that a win today can put them on the right track headed into a next difficult two games at Arkansas State then closing the year against a talented six-win Georgia State team. Because if you lose to Troy and you come back here and you lose today, all of a sudden you're looking down the barrel of four losses in a row to lose to end the season. Yeah. And the question for Louisiana Monroe is going to be how does Caleb Evans answer this adversity, the situation? That's the second pick he's thrown today. Overall, he hasn't Throwing the ball well, he's 10 of 20 for 128 yards. When well, I'll tell you, opposite performance to what we saw last week. Well, I'll tell you what, too. When you look at the score, it really is not much of a reflection, I wouldn't say, on the Monroe defense because they haven't even allowed 300 total yards of offense for Georgia Southern. Really, when you consider the pick six and then the interception that gave Georgia Southern good field position that they scored on in the first quarter. Not to mention the muff punt. And the muff punt. You're talking about 21 out of 38 points coming directly off turnovers. Really, it's the offense and the special teams that have really struggled, if you ask me. Right. Right. 
So this will be do or die time starting this drive for UL Monroe. They're pretty much out of time after that last pick six. By the way, in case you're just joining us, uh, that is two interceptions on the day for Caleb Evans, and he'd only thrown six the whole season uh, coming into this game. He looked downfield again into coverage. Great pass inside the 30-yard line, hauled in by Carter, his second. Well, that's one way to answer back. I'll tell you, for a guy who's only catching one ball a game on average, they're really going to him today. They're opening up the playbook for him. This is the first deep ball we've really seen from the Warhawks this evening. Well, they know. They know that Georgia Southern's offense eats the clock so effectively. you got to go downfield quick. No, this is Matt Viator understanding that Georgia Southern doesn't lose fourth quarter games or they're ahead. It's time right. to score and score now. They'll try again. It's Peterson inside the five. Duncan, no flag. But they're doing the right thing. They need to start getting Peterson involved. He's a tight end, but he is their lead receiver. I believe it's only the second target it is. for Peterson in this game. No catches for him. Considering entering the game, he led the team in receiving yards with 400. He has seven touchdown catches, too. Surprised they've only targeted him twice, but see, now they're lining him as a wide out instead of a tight end. They're going to start trying here. Second down and 10. Evans to the near side, five-yard out pattern. He's got Hodo. Nice catch. Third down. And all the receivers were going short routes there on that play. Just trying to get a quick couple of yards right just to move. move the chains going. Absolutely the right move. Gain of five. Third down and five coming up. And down inside the 14-minute mark. ULM is not converted tonight. They're 0 for 9 on third down. Evans will keep it in a flag in the backfield around the 30. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number eight, five yards from the third down. Josh Johnson got ahead of himself there. And before the flag, it looked like it was going to be a, a keep by Evans. So now it's third and ten. So you just take away the momentum you had in that second down play. Evans has Johnson. He'll have a first down as he gets around the corner down to the 19-yard line. Really nice tuckle to get him out of bounds there, though, by Reynard Ellis. And that's a smart play, going with the, the screen to Johnson to, to give him room to work and have your blockers lead him downfield. Instead of trying to go for something deep, go for something short instead. And let your running back take care of the rest. I think he's going to be short instead, Greg. It's fourth down. Man, that might be inches. Might it's be going to be inches. inches. So they didn't get it. It looked like he fell forward when he outstretched his arm, but well, the maybe well, his he knee as he got out of bounds. So ULM could have sworn he got it, because from up here it looked like they got it too. We'll take a look. From our angle upstairs, it looks pretty Keep in mind, though. Easy to call, but watch his knee and watch the out of bounds. That might be where we're talking here. He's got to get to the 19. No, he, he, he was short. I thought he extended his right arm a little farther than he actually did. So it is fourth down again. ULM's got to go for it again. And the good news for them is they're the number one fourth down team in the conference. They're two for two today, and they're over 50% this year. So when you factor in today, they are 13 for 23 on the year. And... You can't go wrong on whatever play you choose to do. You can give it up in the middle to Johnson. You can do what they did earlier and have a quarterback sneak by Evans. Just don't try it and throw the ball. Just try to run it up the middle. You can also give it to Austin Vaughn, the power back. Well, this is going to be fourth and in inches. I know it technically says and one, but this thing looks like inches uh, from the sticks. You've so just that. falling forward might be enough for Caleb Evans. You see Matt Vietor talking with the official about it. All right, ULM is the best fourth down team in the Sun Belt Conference, but the Eagle defense has been red hot tonight. Evans looks like he's lining up out of the gun with Johnson in the back. Well, that's Vaughn in the backfield with him. He's their short yardage back. He's 5'8", 220. He's a bowling ball. 
If he's on the tracks, you've got to get out of the way. Peterson in motion. Evans falls forward. It looks like he might have gotten that one by a couple of inches. Did he? We'll see. Southern would be celebrating if he hadn't. And he got it by a couple of inches. You just never know. You just never really this know. This defense is not short on celebration when they do good <laughs> things, Danny. <laughs> All right, new first down for the Warhawks. Back in the Georgia Southern red zone. Both teams undefeated in the red zone today. Great pass over the middle. He's got Hodo down near the goal line. Ball's on the ground. He might have passed the plane anyway. Down to the one. No touchdown. Got down to the one. And they'll get to the line fast. First down and goal. Evans out of the gun. Hauled in by McCray. Touchdown ULM. And they score with 12-15 to go in this game, and that's overwhelming. McCray making his fourth catch on the night. It seems like they're going to go for two here. And Evan's still out there. Even the more field. short yardage out of him, huh? All right, so they're going to go for two. Evans, high throw. What a catch by Josh Peterson using that six foot five frame. And he's got the two point conversion. ULM trying to make a push. Not a lot of time left, though. Well, both of these teams on the brink of bowl eligibility, but I'll tell you what, it is not an easy stretch to the finish here for ULM. Yeah, Coastal Carolina and then the Louisiana Raging Cajun on rivalry weekend, and, you know, for Louisiana, a win over Monroe will pretty much seal the West Division and get them to the Sun Belt Conference Championship. And we're, we're close right now to seeing a repeat of last year's championship game when it was at in Louisiana. No kidding. A lot of people would look at the statistics and tell you that those are the two best teams. But if Georgia Southern pulls out a win today and they can get it done at Arkansas State and if they can get it done at, against Georgia State in the final week, they'll have their case. Georgia Southern still has a chance. Well, not to mention they're, they're hoping that Georgia State can upset App State tonight. Literally the only time I believe in history that Georgia Southern fans are pulling for Georgia State in a football game. I don't know. I think some Georgia Southern fans will hope the game gets canceled. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. They don't like either of them. That's a good point. They'd rather have the game not happen at all. And just. <laughs> yeah, that's not what the Sunbelt Conference wants. Well, of course. Maybe but... li linear TV on Saturday night at 730. You don't often get that for the Sunbelt Conference this time of year. That's that. That's prime time, baby. I mean, it's great representation that we've seen from the Sunbelt yeah, Con Conference this year. Yeah, ESPNU. Yeah, ESPNU 730. We'll be watching that. I don't know about you guys at home, but that's where we'll be watching. And not to mention how these teams have competed against Power 5 conference teams throughout the year. Georgia Southern didn't have the best outing against LSU. It's a reverse. It's West Kennedy. Usually that's a play that'll break for 60 yards, but instead he takes a couple of defenders with him, takes a big hit, and gets a gain of about 8 yards. Yeah, Georgia Southern didn't have the best outing against LSU, but took Minnesota to the brinks. Sure did. And then not to mention Monroe taking Florida State to overtime. Mm -hmm. Coastal Carolina beat Kansas. It's been a good year for the App Sun State Conference. beat North and South Carolina. Georgia State beat Tennessee in the opener. Talk about an upset everyone saw coming last week, by the way. App State over South Carolina. That was easy money. Yeah, considering how well App has played against Power 5 teams over the last few years. That was, that was not a shock to anybody. All right, second down and one. King in the backfield with Wirtz. They'll feed him. Defense tackles him from behind, but he got the first down by about a yard as this will take us down inside 11 minutes. So this is a difficult loss uh, if ULM does not pull it back. Now, again, this game is not done yet. 16 points. That's two touchdowns. And two-point two two conversions, correct. So this game is not done yet, though, but... I'll tell you what, uh, Georgia Southern fans have got to be pretty happy with a lot of what they've seen tonight, especially out of the defensive side of the ball. I mean, especially considering about 
how the team performed. Oh, well, let's say he didn't Shore get it. last week. These referees were disagreeing with each other. Actually, they're now saying third and one instead. ULM bringing linebackers off the left side. Wirtz, keeper. There's the first down. Spins to the 37. Time to burn that clock. All George is to do is just keep on, keep this drive going. Continue to take off time downfield. And I don't know if the second half has been quite enough for Shy Wirtz to win Sunbelt Player of the Week, but he'll still be in contention right now. Five for 10, 80 passing yards, a passing touchdown, and then on the ground, 65 rushing yards, and a pair of touchdowns himself on the ground. And again, as it's been for almost two years, no interceptions. Kennedy spins up to around the 45-yard line, gain of six. If Shot is to get player of the week, he at least is player of the game tonight. And speaking of Wes Kennedy, I know I mentioned it a lot on these broadcasts. Uh, speaking of where he's from in Savannah, his high school team, the Benedictine Cadets, won 58 nothing last night. So they're on to the second round, but... Uh, Things get hard for them from here. They go to Cedar Grove next week. Still, Benedictine just produces straight athletes. I mean, the way we've seen West Kennedy produce this season for Georgia Southern, it's incredible. Yeah, speaking of their quarterback, actually, just hours ago, if you're from the area and care, their quarterback, the sophomore, Holden Gurner, just got offered to Georgia. Wow. Second down and four. Back to West they go. Got close there to the line of scrimmage, and after that first half injury, Shaw's been all over the place making tackles. We'll call this third down and one inside the nine-minute mark. Eagles above their season percentage tonight. Entered the game 31% on the year on fourth down. Tonight they're four for 10. Kennedy breaks another first down. Find a good couple of blockers. Pushes forward past the 45. No quitting him, huh? Time to burn that clock. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah, he's had a great, a great outing today. 17 carries on the night. Usually Kennedy leads the Eagles in rushing yards. Tonight is J.D. King, who's been superb. 12 carries, 82 yards, and a touchdown. All right, speaking of numbers, as we get ready to take this down inside the eight-minute mark here, if Georgia Southern holds on, which is looking more and more likely with every first down, they'll move to 4-0 and in bad weather, including rain and cold conditions on the air. 4-0, they're built for this. Back to the ground to King. Turns that into three or four yards. Well, as you said, they are getting ready for a cold night in Jonesboro next week. Well, I'll tell you, that part of the country at this time of year, that is going to be frigid and dry, which is going to make it hard to hold on to the ball. That's going to be a running game. Works out well for the Eagles being a primary running team. Well, how about that? Isn't that convenient? <laughs> Can't overlook that Arkansas State game considering the story their team and their coach has been through this year. Very emotional journey in Jonesboro. But it all leads back in two weeks to that game here against Georgia State on Thanksgiving weekend. And for Arkansas State. That's going to be a face mask. Oh. Yeah. And he knows it. He's pounding the ground as he goes down. That's definitely on Austin Holly. Yeah, face mask there. Yikes. Didn't even have to finish the play. <laughs> yeah. And he hung on to it, too, as he went down. During the run, personal foul, face mask, defense, number 15. 15 yards away from previous spot. Automatic, first down. Yeah, that's usually how that goes. And he brought up the, the uh, emotional season there has been for Arkansas State's head coach. They've re recently retaken the lead over Coastal Carolina ahead 21-13. to 13. Really? They hang on to that game and win that, they'll be bowl eligible too. What an emotional journey it's been for Arkansas State. Yeah, you're right, that would get them to six wins. Another primary passing team led by Lane Hatcher. 
Yeah, so if, if this Georgia Southern defense can do next week what they did this week, they've got a good chance out there in Jonesboro. New first and 10 after the penalty. Wurtz the option. He's got J.D. King inside the 20. Turns up field toward the 10 before he takes a big hit that time from Glass. And keep in mind for the Red Wolves, Omar Bayless has been playing out of his mind this season. Set a record for receiving touchdowns in the Sun Belt Conference. That's going to be another primary guy they try to stop. And Jordan Sons did a good job stopping key number one receivers. They've done it today against Josh Peterson. He wasn't really effective until recently. Two targets, that's it. He didn't make well, the two-point two two conversion. conversion. Yeah. yeah, it's three. But other times when receivers have play Georgia Southern. They haven't had the best of best of games. That's true. They got to get down to the two-yard line here. First and ten from the 12. Kennedy and King in the backfield. It's going to be King. Pins down to around the 10 and a flag from the far judge. During the run, face mask, defense, five. Have to get to sit it. First down. So another face mask this time. Well, it looks like the ULM defense is ready to let this one go on ice. They've been frustrated here on this drive. Yeah. I mean, take a look here. This time it's on Kerry Starks. All right, Georgia Southern breaks the huddle quick. Down to the five-yard line, new first and goal after the face mask. Eagles trying to seal this one at home. And it's Kennedy down to the two or the three. Good last second tackle that time coming in again from Shaw. Really good game for him. Yeah, and for a moment there, we didn't know Shaw was going to come back into the game, suffered an injury early in the first half. I would actually go as far to say as I think he might. I know he's not leading the team in tackles today, but it feels like he has on important ones, right? Yeah, the key tackles he's made for sure. Really important ones. Tyler Glass has led the defense with 10 total tackles. Yeah. All right, so Mashad split to the top of your screen. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. This is a spot they might like to try him on second and goal. Cam Brown in motion. J.D. King. No, it's shy. He kept it himself and went down around the line of scrimmage. It was tripped up. Yeah, Hunter he Smith, the lineman. Tried to change his direction and in the process may have slipped on the, on the turf. But e either way, even though the Eagles haven't been, gotten in the end zone yet, they're still taking time off the clock. Oh, and any points here, even a field goal from Tyler Bass, would actually make this a three possession game, which would pretty much put it out of reach. Right. So as we tick down inside the four minute mark of this game here. A touchdown from Georgia Southern would put this game on ice and pretty much seal bowl eligibility and would get him to six wins. J.D. King tries to do it. He spins down to the one. And it might be Tyler Bass time to make it a three-possession game. And if that's it... I don't know. Well, the, the offense fans, is calling for it. The they want to try. Calling for it. The fans are calling for it. They want to see a touchdown. They, they, they want it. <laughs> The now little Chad Lunsford led him. Kennedy's coming on the field. This offense wants it. Fans chanting one more time. Close to a 10-minute drive for Georgia Southern here. Yeah, this will be the nail in the coffin. They are going for it on fourth down. The offense wants to end this game and get them bowl eligible. It's the option. They fumbled it. Shy inside the 10, drag down. It'll be ULM ball, horse collar tackle. There it is. Yeah, I was about to say, then he got dragged down by the horse collar towards the end. Unnecessary. Well, 
Four plays for Georgia Southern. More that's time taken off the clock. However, the defense did a good job blowing that off. Just a, a bad pitch by Shy. Totally unnecessary tackle, by the way. Austin Hawley again. Well. They'll get another chance. Offense wants it. Luckily for some fans at home, the touchdown that would normally matter in a situation like this, which might put you on bad beats, has already occurred. <laughs> in case you were wondering. Three minutes to go. Four downs to do it. Kennedy. He's got it. Georgia Southern puts this one on ice, and they'll be bowl eligible with a win over the ULM Warhawks. Rock out and fire that cannon, Wes. And they've doubled up the Warhawks. And this will more than double it up with Tyler Bass. It's almost like Kennedy has had a, a touchdown in every game since he's returned. They're going to fake it. Are you kidding me? Well, maybe they're saving that for when it matters to try to trick play with Anthony Beck there. But either way, 44, 22 will be more than enough. We'll get ready to put a bow on this one after this on ESPN+. Plus. He won't smile until this game's over, but Chad Lunsford's got to be pretty happy down to Amy Zimmer with more. Greg, coming into this week, Chad Lunsford called their loss to Troy simply embarrassing. The vibe wasn't there, and it simply wasn't Georgia Southern football. This was a game that they wanted to come in and win with a statement, and they're doing exactly that tonight with the far lead. And this is something that the Eagles were striving for all week through practices, focusing on just simply one game at a time and going 1-0. Greg, back to you. Yeah, Danny, I think the nice thing he said at the press conference is they were simply embarrassed. I think he said elsewhere that they got their butt kicked. So, heck of a turnaround. Well, it wasn't just him that said it. Offensive coordinator Bob the best said it as well. They've made some adjustments this week. They know that they're better than this, and they've shown it out here tonight. Certainly did, getting ready to put a bow on this one in Statesboro. 2.48 to go as Bass puts that one out of the back of the end zone. All right, so as we get ready to wrap this one up, the end of this season does not get any easier. So we'll see at the end of this game if we can get a final scoring update on Arkansas State. Either way, they're going to Jonesboro uh, next weekend, and that's going to be a tough game because as of right now, Arkansas State is up on Coastal Carolina, so Arkansas State looks like they are potentially about here to pick up their sixth win and then at home against six win uh, Georgia State on the 30th on Thanksgiving weekend. So a tough couple of weeks, a couple of years for Evans to pass here. Got out of bounds. All right, so... And by the way, it looks like Coastal Carolina just got down to the Arkansas State one-yard line, so they're potentially about to tie this thing up. But either way, uh, Arkansas State, half the country away in the freezing cold, is not going to be easy nor fun next week. And then Georgia State at home, who you've never beat in Statesboro, those are both toss-ups. This is a great opportunity for Georgia Southern to get back on track here following this game. All day for Evans again, spins out of it, under pressure. Here comes Watkins, gets rid of it and finds Vaughn out of the backfield, short gain, bringing up third down, didn't get out of bounds. Awesome. All right, so next week, yeah. what do we think about that game? So this defense, even without Kendall Vildor today, has held an offense that torched him for 300 yards last year to a pretty anemic performance. But it's hard to know what to think about that considering how many yards they gave up to Troy last week. Who knows? Third down. Can they keep them 0 for on third down tonight? Looks like it. Fourth down coming up. So what do we think about that game next week, considering the vast pendulum swing we've seen over the course of the last seven days? Well, if Kendall Builder didn't play today with the game time decision, there's a strong chance that he could play next week. Right. And you're going to need him because the big matchup is going to be Omar Bayless 
versus whoever's lining up against him, whether it be Bill Dorf, if he comes back, or Monclavian Brinson, or Jesse Liptry gets to call the game. Yeah, that spread's got to be less than a touchdown when it comes out, too. Linebackers off the edge. Evans over the middle. That's a complete pass. He's got Hodo to around midfield. Wrapped up by Rutledge. Ball's on the ground. He was down first. That's going to be less than a spread. A less than a touchdown spread. That's going to be an awfully fun game, though. Cannot wait to see how that one turns out. I know there might be more high-profile games in the Sun Belt next week. Uh, that one's going to determine a lot. Well, yeah, next week we're going to South Alabama against Georgia State, Texas State against App, Southern on the road against Arkansas State. New first and ten. Evans into coverage, incomplete, going for Jackson. Keep going. Monroe returns home to host Coastal Carolina. The big game really will be Troy and Louisiana. Yeah, it, it's the 5 o'clocker. It's Troy and against the Cajuns. That's the big one. But still, I mean, everything goes down to, to rivalry week in two weeks from that from today. When you have when you have Arkansas State of South Al, App State and Troy, that's and of course, the, that's a big one. Georgia Southern versus Georgia State. Short there, neither for K and White. So I'll say, even though the Troy game next week and the 5 o'clocker might be billed as the biggest one, I think that Georgia Southern Arkansas State game for people who follow the Sunbelt Conference might be the most enticing. Down inside a minute as we're getting ready to wrap this thing up. Third down and eight for Monroe. Into coverage. Hauled in by Jackson and right before the whistle, ULM finally converts for the first time tonight on third down. Yeah, this is the the type of offense that the Warhawks wanted to see all game and couldn't really get it until the final minute. Well, how about this game? What a gosh, what a two week stretch for Georgia Southern this has been. Evans rushed. Under pressure, looking to get rid of it. He'll throw it away. Going to bring up second down with 37 seconds. Halloween night on the road at App State. Knock your rivals out of the top 25. Give them their first loss of the year. Turn around nine days later. Go to Troy. Put on arguably your worst performance of the year. Turn around seven days after that and double up a team that is featuring two of the best players on offense in the Sunbelt Conference. No flag coming in in Jackson's favor. That'll bring up third down. What a stretch this has been. Just a, a massive a pendulum swing both ways. Yeah, I mean, I said before, you remember we talked about the storm before the calm. First four games. First four games were rough. Also, there were a foul Wesley Kennedy, but since then, Kennedy has scored in every game he's been in this season. He was a Sunbelt Conference Honoree didn't make any of the, uh, the, the first or second teams. He will now. Yeah, no kidding. Down to around the 20-yard line. Nice haul in there. That'll be a first down. That was caught by Jaquan Bloomfield. Redshirt freshman out of Katy, Texas. Trying to put some more points on the board. With 26 seconds to go, Warhawks never say die. But Georgia Southern is ready to celebrate on the field tonight at Paulson Stadium. Rebounding after a tough loss against Troy, putting them in bowl eligibility. Evans for the end zone to Peterson. He's got it. Touchdown ULM with 20 seconds to go. I'll tell you, I think if they had thrown to him more tonight, if he'd been able to get open, he might have given them a chance, Danny. Yeah, unable to. Wasn't utilized until... Late in the second half was mainly a, a, a blocker on the offensive line, so they started pushing him out as a slot receiver. I mean, he gets his eighth touchdown on the year, but not at a moment that could really give the team an opportunity to fight back in the game. No, definitely not. And here's Porter for 29. 
He's got it, and that'll take us to one last break on ESPN+. Plus. Get ready to wrap this one up in Statesboro. All right, Danny, we open the broadcast tonight on ESPN Plus talking about bowl eligibility. Georgia Southern gets to six wins. Uh, based on what's coming up for ULM, that's going to be difficult. Yeah, and you got to remember, six wins does make you bowl eligible, but sometimes you might not make the cut. The Warhawks know that very well last season, finishing up six and six. That's why it's important for Georgia Southern. Oh, hold on. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Monquavian Brinson. Touchdown. How about that? <laughs> he saw the onside <laughs> kick and took it to the house. Stepped in front of it. Uh, Monquavian, you're a dirty dog, man. So between that and the blocked field goal at the Minnesota game that he ran back, that's two special teams touchdowns for him on the year. Wow, he snagged that one quick. He made a beeline to the end zone for the touchdown. Talk about, I, I don't know. 50-burger for Georgia Southern. Who saw that coming? I don't know. But, like... <laughs> Icing on the cake is one thing. They've been to put the icing on this game a while ago. What do you call this? <laughs> uh, the over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's say it this way. If you believed in Georgia Southern headed into this game, you have been rewarded handsomely. Comes from Bass, kind of a rocky hold there from Beck, but it is up and it is good. Uh, 50 burger for Georgia Southern. How about that? Neator is just looking at this belief. Just, what happened? I'll tell you, the special teams play and the defensive turnovers forced by Georgia Southern that led to pretty good long offensive sustained drives that resulted in touchdowns. They can play this way the next two weeks. They'll win the next two games, but. That's the thing against Arkansas State and Georgia State. Who's going to show up? Is it the team from tonight and from the Coastal Carolina and New Mexico State game, or is it the team from the Troy game? Well, the big thing is that they can't have a big head when they're going into practice this week. You know, stay I, don't, stay, I don't think that's going to be a problem after humble. the Troy game. you got to stay humble and finish out the season strong, do the work. Can't get too high after a win, like they did after App and then going to Troy. All right, so Bass to put this one away, unless we see another touchdown on the run back. I saw an onside kick and snatched for a touchdown. Anything can happen. I have not seen, I've never seen anything like that. Just so swift, the way Brinson just got it. It's kind of the thing you see more in a high school football game versus a D1 <laughs> FBS college football game. But, hey, happy for Monquavia. That's another touchdown for him. That's two special teams on the year. That's uh, probably two more than he thought he would have. I think it's the first kickoff return touchdown for Georgia Southern this season as well. You know what? If you think about it that way, technically you're right. Yeah, because Punts Wesley, included. Kennedy, yeah, no, Wesley right. Kennedy had the punt return a few weeks ago. No, but yeah, you're right. This kickoff return, this might be the first. No, you're right. All right, here's Johnson. No 70-yard run for him there. Didn't pick up the first down, and that'll end it today in Statesboro. 51-29, to 29, your final score. Georgia Southern with the bounce-back win of the year after getting throttled last week at Troy, Danny. Georgia Southern fans have to feel confident headed into the home stretch after this. Yeah, definitely a step in the right direction from Georgia Southern, bouncing back after the loss against Troy. Now they have to put their focus on Arkansas State. They're 1-0 this week. Now they're looking to do the same next week against the Red Wolves. Yeah, that's going to be a really interesting game halfway across the country in Jonesboro. You can find that on ESPN Networks as well. So, for Danny Waugh, Amy Zimmer, and the rest of our broadcast team tonight, at Georgia Southern, I'm Greg Talbot saying thank you for joining us. The final score tonight, Eagles 51, Warhawks 29. All games are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. And this has been a proud presentation of ESPN. Good night.